ability, aptitude, expertise, genius, gift. I'm the fucking talent. Hey, what's happening? I'm Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. It's quiet now, it's the calm before the storm. You ask what that means, I say to you that it's quiet in my apartment because uh, right now we're silent, but uh, it's also daytime, and so like people could be doing real life stuff and they might be intruding on the microphone, but the air conditioning will also come on, and uh, basically this is me telling you up front, it's an amateur hour. This is a very amateur podcast. I wish it weren't. I've been doing it 12 years. I wish I had a soundproofed, uh, egg-crated fucking room where I could come in here with a pipe and smoke it and tell you all about fireside chats. Let's talk about the Japanese and that goddamn tricky Pearl Harbor nonsense. What are you thinking, people? God damn it, die bombing our goddamn Hawaiian installation. Stay out of our islands. Uh, that's what I would do if I was FDR. I would roll in in my chair and then bring you guys some sort of story about what was going on in the world. Some some tenuous situation in Norway that only the U.S. could help. Because remember when the U.S. did that? The U.S. helped other countries and everybody looked at us and went, my hero. Like every, every other country in this fucking world on this planet tied Nell to the train tracks they had a snidely whiplash mustache. They all wore a dark top hat and a black cape. And what happened? We showed up. Fucking crazy big stallion, big ass fucking white cowboy hat. And we were like, here I come to save the day. And we'd untie her. And then we'd fucking rail the shit out of her on the train home, whatever the fuck. Awesome. Smart, right? That's what we did as a country. And now what do we do? We, we skulk around in alleys like Jack the goddamn Ripper and leave bodies in our wake and just blood in the fucking gutter. What is wrong with us? What happened to us, man? I don't know. And, and look, I, I should tell you this, by the way, we were doing all that for a long time as I, I've, I've gone to educate myself in my old age. And I read about things that happened in the old days uh, to a- ask the Tuskegee airmen if we were wearing white hats and saving anybody. They'll have a different answer for you. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, are they still around? Are there any Tuskegee airmen we can chat with? Let's get uh, give me the phone. Hold on a second. It's uh, Tuskegee six five thousand. Let's call them right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm proud of myself for that on the fly. I don't know what's happening in this world. And look, I got to tell you, this is a, this, this episode, uh, first of all, I should tell you this, it's Thursday. Like what? Yes. I'm actually recording early on a Thursday, early eh, morning, late morning. Uh, so I'm, so we're creeping ever closer to having a show for you in on Thursday morning, like Christmas when you wake up and go, yay, there it is. Uh, but yeah, we're getting as close as we possibly can to going ahead and back uh, on the real schedule where we're, we're moving, we're grooving. We're uh, we're improving. We're all of these things. That's what you would say in like a Pilates class. We're moving. We're grooving. We're also improving. Uh, and that's what we're doing together, right? All of us together. Me, you. Not that you need to improve or move or groove. I need to do all of those things because I need to bring this show to you on an early Thursday time uh, slot. Like it used to be when it was well, late Wednesday, even. And then you'd wake up Thursday and be like, oh, like Santa was here. Santa Schmidt came and he dropped off a podcast present. Let's open it up. Mommy, I love it. Uh, there's a puppy in the box dead. Uh, I always saw that in commercials where they'd be like, yay, I got a puppy for Christmas. And I just thought, man, you know, I mean, my mom had to hide my fucking gifts under a bed or in a closet forever. Like, how do you hide a fucking puppy? Do you get that Christmas Eve and hope it doesn't bark? Because kids are peeking out of their goddamn room like Ed Grimley. Just going, what the fuck's going on down there? Who's barking? Because I'll, t- I'll tell you this. As a child, if you hear unidentified, if you don't have a pet and you hear unidentified barking coming out of your parents' room, oh, that that doesn't make a Merry Christmas for anybody. That that's that sets you to thinking about a whole bunch of different things that you never even wanted to contemplate, for fuck's sake. Uh, you just And you're like snooping for gifts. You find a dog collar in your parents' room. Ah, oh, man, you know, that's going to scar you for life. I don't give a fuck what kind of golden retriever you got Christmas morning. You're still going to be thinking about your mom barking, and that's not good for anyone. Or even worse, your dad barking. He's getting fucking pegged in a dog collar. Oh, man. you're then just right now, think about that. Think about your dad with his ankles up over his ears and your mom just staring down at him. Cigarette in her mouth. Your mom doesn't have to smoke when she's doing it, but she does. You know why? Because he likes it. He asks her, do me a favor, fucking smoke that cigarette and blow the smoke in my face. Uh, and it's <laughs> because I want to be look, I'm, I'm dirty. If I'm getting pegged, it's dirty. I want you to blow smoke in my face like this isn't even a fucking choice. This is anything that I like. I got a collar on. I got ankles above my fucking shoulders. And my wife is just staring down at my face with contempt as ashes are falling into my mouth. Good Lord. Uh, my, I gotta be glad my dad died early and I didn't have to contemplate that as a child. Why am I bringing this up to that nightmare scenario up to you guys? This couldn't be anything that you're going through or we're going through or they're going through or anybody's going through. I hope that never happened to anybody. Please never, never tell me that you heard your parents, your dad getting pegged in the ankles and the fucking ashes. Nobody likes that. Uh, but it's Thursday, man. Look at me. I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to do a, a show. Ready? I guess I'm kind of doing the show already. Although again, this show, I'm going to tell you this right now. This show is not, uh, it's not going to count against your your 
your normal allotment of shows. As you probably indicated, or you probably uh, figured out by the name of this show, which I don't know what the name of the show will be, quite frankly. Um, not the name, but I mean the, like the episode count. Because, you know, we're, we were up to episode 49. This should be episode 50, uh, but it's not, man. We're putting five zero on the shelf, and this is going to be episode whatever the fuck. I can't, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But uh, And I know you're thinking to yourself, whoa, Mike, what the fuck? What's the problem with that? I, I, I look... It's not really a problem. It's just, uh, all right, I'll, I'll share you two different things. One, well, it's, for, it's for a reason that I'm going ahead and I put the, the fucking, I've pushed it aside or pushed it back a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm buying time is what I'm doing. I don't want to get into why, but I'm buying time in this, in this present incarnation of the show. So this isn't episode 50. This is episode whatever. And, uh, and so there you go. So don't fucking sue me. Don't be like, oh, I can't believe you gave us this fake episode. It's not fake. It's still me. I'm talking. There's a microphone. It's open. I don't know how long it's going to go. It could be just me and plugs. But there, I will tell you this, uh, stick around because there might be something at the end you might want to hear, or maybe not. Just leave. You know, just take off now. (laughs) I'm sure you probably threw your fucking iPod into a volcano once I talked about your dad getting railed by your mom and ashes falling in his mouth. But that's a, that's a fucking, you know what? That really is a descriptive thing. That, that sounds like something I've thought about. And I promise you, I never have. That just popped in my head right now i just came up with that scenario of your dad with his ankles up around his fucking shoulders and a fucking dog collar on him as your mom chokes him and then she rails and pegging him from the fucking <laughs> look in her eye as the ashes fall into his mouth because he begged her to smoke a cigarette while it was going on boy this is this is pretty descriptive i should write this down shouldn't i or actually i shouldn't because i've now just set it into a microphone and now it stays here forever and now you're gonna go ahead and think of it always aren't you uh look you know what do me a favor if you're lucky enough to have two parents still then don't give me a hard time there's the air conditioning it just came rampaging in because, uh, again, as I've mentioned before, I don't have a studio. I don't have a producer. I'm not I'm not fucking Mark Marin who's in a garage. I guess that's better than what I have. What does he, can you hear an air conditioning at his place? I have no idea. But it does seem. But here's the thing. On my show, it's me, microphone and air conditioning and Mark Marin's. It's Mark Marin's microphone, air conditioning and Henry Kissinger. You know what I mean? So it's like the presence of Henry Kissinger in the garage leads you to go. Well, I don't need to worry so much about the air conditioning because I'm listening about Cambodia. There's a there's a there's a holiday in Cambodia. There's a Henry Kissinger. There's a Kissinger in Cambodia. There's a Kissinger. There's a garage in Cambodia with Mark Marin doing a goddamn podcast. Uh, what if he takes it on the road? What if he does that? He goes to Cambodia. He goes to Laos. He goes to Thailand. He goes to Taiwan. He goes to somebody else with a tie in it. You want to tie me up with some of your ties, Ty? All right. Uh, let's slow down, right? What do you say? We go ahead and throttle it down. Then we grab the old knob. <laughs> that didn't sound good at all. I'm thinking like a gear shift, you know, like and you fucking throttle down. Uh, but it sounds like I just grabbed my crank, and I promise you I did not. Uh, a lot of crank imagery. It's early in this show for a lot of crank imagery. It doesn't usually come at you this early. Usually it's like when you wake up in the morning, you have some coffee, take a shower, then you're ready to attack your day. And then here we go. Bring on the cocks. Then, then you're ready to deal with it. It's uh, sometime afternoon. But I'll tell you this. You're getting this in the afternoon on a Thursday. It's not like this is early on a goddamn Thursday morning. So you know what? Embrace the cocks. They come fucking fast and furious flying at your face right now. Like that gif of that woman getting all those hot dogs that bounce off her fucking skull. You ever see that? That woman's got to be proud. I don't know what sketch that was. Is that Olivia Munn getting the hot dogs? Because I've seen Olivia Munn on her tiptoes trying to eat a fucking hot dog at a fishing line. And I don't mean just in my dreams. I mean, I've seen that for real. That was the thing she did on the show. Then she got mustard on her face. Then she flashed a tit on the show. Olivia Munn is fucking... Look, let's face it, man. She is fucking hot, right? We can all agree on that. I, it's funny. I read these things. And everybody's like, oh, Olivia Munn. She's, she got an attitude. Or, oh, my God, what did she do? Or she had work done. I don't give a fuck, man. Olivia Munn is crazy hot. She's funny. She's got a fun personality. She bearded for Aaron Rodgers for years, so I should imagine she made like fucking $10 million doing that. Look at her. Look at her just tackling the fucking universe, the world, using what God gave her and using it to the fucking best advantage she possibly can. I got nothing but respect for Olivia Munn. You know why? Because she acts. She acted in life and she acts in movies. She probably acted in TV shows, too, when she hosted that fucking show. She Didn't she hang out with Hardwick, too? Maybe she knew Hardwick. Maybe he hit her in that fucking head with her hot dog and she had to fucking deal with that. So she should get all the fucking money she possibly can going forward. Plus, she's hot and funny. Can't argue with hot and funny, right? God knows if I was hot and funny, that's all I'd do is I'd let people bounce hot dogs off my skull, put a gif off of myself, go to Cancun, say, hey, look, this is my ass. Take it or fucking leave it. And everybody's going to want to take it, but you don't even get the fucking chance. I'm just showing it to you right now. God damn it. Olivia Munn is a, just just a fucking oof, just on fucking fire. Just like a, a fiery, uh, like, like in a, you ever seen a fireplace is just a roaring fucking five alarm blaze? That's probably a fire place that's gotten out of control. Hold on. Let's just have a nice calm fire uh, where FDR is sitting there telling you about Japan while Olivia Munn, Olivia Munn is bent over. God, that's hot. All right. Take her. Take her, FDR. 
dude, give her the fucking, <laughs> that's right, give her the fucking F, the D, and the goddamn R. Woo-hoo-hoo. I'll tell you what, Olivia Munn, you want a new deal? I'll fucking new deal all over your goddamn back. That's FDR, baby. Hops out of the fucking wheelchair, goes, yeah, I can walk. And he just fucking rails her, baby. Just fucking goes to work. I'll pearl your harbor. How about that? You want a piece of that? I'll piece your accords. I'll fireside your chat. Who wants to do that? <laughs> That's what FDR is doing. He's up doing the fucking cartwheels and shit like that. And who's his wife? Like, is uh, FDR's wife, is his wife Eleanor? Or is that Teddy's wife, Eleanor? Or was she married to all of them? What if she was? Holy fuck. What if the Roosevelt's just passed around Eleanor? Like, she was fucking married to all of them because, and she was the brains of the outfit. FDR was the fucking president, but Eleanor was calling the shots. And it, she came along after Teddy. Teddy was like, she was Teddy's wife, too, and he was, she was calling the shots. She created the fucking Bull Moose Party and the New Deal. Goddamn, Eleanor Roosevelt's the greatest American who ever fucking lived. Look at her, baby. Just fucking out of her closet, taking care of business. Yes, I know. She was supposedly closeted. I was talking about that with Beach this week. Beach is like, you know, Eleanor Roosevelt was possibly a lesbian. And I was like, uh, we were talking about Chinese food. But that's fine. Go ahead and drop a Roosevelt lesbian reference on me. Literally, we were talking about we were talking about chop suey. And you drop an Eleanor Roosevelt scissoring thing on me. I don't, that's fine, Beach. That's what you want to do. If that's how you handle your presidential business. Uh, if that's how you want to talk about first ladies. First lady in your heart. First lady in your head. Uh, all right. So yeah, I'm buying time this week and that's what I'm doing. That's, I just, I can't help it. Uh, and that's why I bring you presidential filth. That's what I do. Let's talk about FDR tagging Olivia Munn right there at the guy to the fireplace. There you go. Uh, let's talk about fucking Obama. Let's do that. All right. All right. All right just, I, right, this came up to me today. You know, Obama has a deal with Netflix and, and I don't mean like he gets to watch movies. Like he, it's not like he has a subscription. I mean, he has a fucking deal. Uh, and he's making shows like him and Michelle, I think, both. And maybe the kids, too. I don't know. And and look, man, I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, I guess it's fine. Uh, you know, I because I, we love him, right? He's, he's the guy we all loved as a person. I don't know if we loved him as a president so much. Uh, although I did. I voted for him fucking twice. And I, I but then I, re, then I read stuff about him and I'm like, oh, he did that. I didn't know. I didn't fight hard enough for fucking justices and whatever the fuck. I don't, I don't, again, I don't want to know any of this bullshit. This doesn't mean anything to me. Um... But I, but I have to admit, and this is the 53-year-old man of me, all right? This is just, when I was a kid, you know, you were a president, and then you stopped being a president, and then and then you fucking, you went and you gave speeches, and you wore suits, and, and uh, you wrote your memoirs, and you got interviewed, and you made, you got, you know, whatever the fuck. It's just, you, you composed yourself with some sort of modicum of, I guess, sophistication is the word I'm looking for. You weren't out pitching, you know, Survivor Vanuatu featuring the Obamas. You know, I, I just... And I'm sure he's making educational shows and he's making one, but he's not making, you know, John Wick and Barack f- go to fucking Cincinnati, which although I'll tell you what, do you, do you watch that movie? I watched that fucking movie immediately. John Wick and John Wook. Who's John Wook? John Wookie. Uh, John Wick and Barack go to fucking Cincinnati. I, um, I don't know. I, I just, and I, I don't expect him to white knight the whole fucking country and come in and save us from the idiot. Cause I told you, I also don't blame him for disappearing. Like I, I, when, when all the shit finished after eight years, all the fucking garbage he went through with the birther and the birth certificate, and you're not from America, and he's a Muslim, and he's a secret, and she's might be a man, and oh, oh, you want kids to eat a healthy lunch? Well, fuck you. Oh, a tan suit? Well, fuck you. Oh, did you put fucking mustard on a hot dog with ketchup? Fuck you. I mean, it's just, it's every garbage piece of shit thing they did to that guy. He should have just, like I said, well, I said when he won his fucking second uh, term, he should have walked out in a fucking dashiki. And just and just looked at everybody and just been like, and given the can you dig it speech from the Warriors and then walk the fuck off. That would have been fucking gorgeous. Just fucking f- firmly plant your foot in everybody's goddamn ass. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? And then walk off. Just fucking go conduct your next four years and just have a bully pulpit and fuck everybody up. But then fucking the, the Senate came along and then the branches of government that used to matter. Remember when the branches of government mattered? Everybody's like, oh, yeah, don't worry. There's checks. And then there's possibly also balances. We'll throw an ampersand between the two and then we'll have checks and balances. It'll be great. Now there's no checks unless the fucking they're, you know, writing them to themselves. <laughs> That's fucking Mark Russell quality. Get me a goddamn piano. I'm a hack. Um, no balances either. Unless you're talking about balancing that fucking mib on fucking Trump's head in the wind. Oh, man, what a crazy... And look, we all, all right, <laughs> I don't want to talk about this shit. I really don't. I just, it's just fucking, I'm still looking for an escape plan, man. I mean, I'm thinking I'm going to have to go to Mexico, which I don't know, man. I, that's fine, I suppose. Maybe I'll go to Zewatanejo and build a boat and wait for fucking Morgan Freeman to show up. Hey, who out there wants me to bury him fucking some cash under a tree in Oklahoma or whatever the fuck? Take a bus down and meet me in Mexico. God, 
damn it, I don't know what's going to... Because I can't go to Canada. I have people in Canada. I could have gone to Canada. It would have been fine. They would have fucking borne me aloft on their shoulders and carried me around and made sure that I had all the maple syrup and crunchy leaves I needed to survive in that goddamn country. Uh, but instead, now I got to go south to Mexico, which is fine because, again, I like the weather. I don't care for the cartel. I mean, I, you know, because, look, you know me. I'm going to go to fucking Mexico, and there's going to be some dust up in a goddamn convenience store. And the next thing you know, my head's on a tortoise. And it's walking out of the fucking country over the goddamn border. Everybody's like, oh, there he is. That's not good. And can I broadcast? Is there like Radio Free Mexico? Will I be able to even fucking upload something? They have the internet in Mexico, right? I would assume they do. I don't know. Has the junta taken care of that yet? Has the, has the cabal or the, the... Is it cabal? What am I thinking, though? The, uh, the cartel. There you go. Why did I think of cabal? The cartel. They must have taken over the internet down there. So all the, what am I going to be, the fucking Christian Slater of Mexico? Just like, you know, <laughs> hey, all the great themes have been taken and turned into theme parks. Uh, you know, I'll be just fucking doing my damn, uh, what the fuck is that, Blame It on the Moon? What the fuck is the name of that movie? Uh, uh, Pirate Radio? No. Uh, pump up the volume. Blame It on the Moon. <laughs> Don't ask how my fucking brain works, man. I got no idea. Pump Blame It on the Moon. <laughs> that's a good was that also a christian slater movie i don't know he did the baboon heart movie right what the fuck was that movie where he had to put a fucking animal heart in his chest and uh or, or did he have a baboon heart or did he have to give his heart to a baboon i don't remember which it was look i didn't watch it i love christian slater i just watched true romance this week and i'll tell you what it's perfect i'll fight you if you say it isn't god damn everybody's perfect in it fucking walking fucking hopper oldman uh, motherfucking Charlie Bronson. God damn it, man. You got to watch that fucking movie if you haven't seen it. And what's funny, I'm so disappointed. I will never get over it. John, my buddy who was my trainer, uh, we had ta- we had really the same taste in basically everything. Uh, it seemed like, anyway. Uh, but he also thinks I'm an old man a lot of the time, which I am, certainly, compared to him. But uh, I gave him True Romance once, the DVD. He didn't watch it for like eight months. Like, he just had it. And then one day he handed it back to me at the gym, and I'm like, ah, oh, you just give up? He goes, no, man, I watched it. I go, oh, dude, finally, awesome. And he's like, eh. And I went, you've got to be kidding me. And he's like, nah, it just, uh, I don't know, man. It's just, I, I guess it didn't hold up or whatever. And I'm like, it didn't hold up? What the fuck is wrong with you, man? And then uh, and then I just watched it this week, and it's, it's fucking perfect. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. The only thing I would do is if we could somehow get Rappaport out of there, because he's just so annoying. Even his Dick Ritchie, a character who's supposed to be fucking annoying, but everybody else in it is fucking Penn and Sizemore as the cops. They're fucking gold. Everybody in that movie is. A, I made Beach watch it. Cause she was like, uh, we picked movies this week. She made me watch The Misfits. You ever see The Misfits? Uh, Beach doesn't, you know, Beach is, uh, she's an, uh, I would say an old soul. You know, she likes a lot of uh, like movies from the, the past. Um, you know, we all have our things that we found comfort in, you know, where I, I, I like violence and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I also find myself, as I've mentioned before, I find myself watching old movie or old news shows from when I was a kid, like old, these old, literally 30 minute newscasts from 1978, 79, 82 from WGN. I even love the theme song of Nightbeat. I, I just, it takes me back to that nostalgic time when it was just, it, you know, the, the world hadn't gone tits up and you had everything in front of you and, uh, it's it's a it's a dangerous feeling, you know, because uh, and look, I don't I don't want to make it about this, but you know, you, you you realize you're never going back. I'm sure I've said this before on many other shows, but boy, you know, you whatever midlife crisis, however you want to talk about it, we, you when you really sit down and when, like I said, when it's quiet and when it's dark, and you sit there and you think to yourself, Jesus Christ, I you know I did this, I should have done that, I could have done this, all all the all your life comes rushing. Uh, uh, over your your heart and your brain, just like water out of a faucet, and you realize the mistakes you've made and the things you could have done or should have done. And you always see these things where everybody's like, it's never too late, man. That's fine. Well, okay, tell my knees. That's fine. Tell my tell my heart, which is encased in a fucking candy-coated shell. I mean, I, I've, I've done damage. And yes, you dig out, you grab the shovel, that's all you do. You move forward, you be a fucking shark. I get it. But dudes... When you look back at when you were 13 and 14 and you, and, and uh, it's, it's just it, and look, it's easy to romanticize those times, too. You know what I mean? Because I, uh, I, you know, I grew up in a house where there wasn't a whole lot of discipline and a whole lot of supervision. And so I was able to do what the fuck I wanted, which I'm paying for now because I never learned how to be a disciplined person or have supervision about myself or I, whatever the fuck. And who cares? Um, 
but you do that. You marinate in, in things from your past because they, uh, they make you feel uh, warm and they take you back to a time when you were hopeful. And Beej, her, the thing that she does is she watches older movies and stuff because she used to watch uh, AMC, I think it was, or Turner Classic Movies, I think. She watched uh, one of those channels, both those channels, possibly, and she just found a lot of uh, solace and comfort in watching these older movies. Like, she made me watch, um, and she, and they're, look, they're, they're brilliant movies. Critics loved them. I think, what did we watch? Fucking Cary Grant and something. Uh, and then we just watched The Misfits which is Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe and Montgomery Clift and uh, Eli Wallach. And uh, it's directed by John Huston. And uh, it's, it's boy, I'll tell you, it's, it's like a play. First of all, the world has changed so much. I mean, it, it's, it's, you watch that movie and it's like a play. Clark Gable is this aging out cowboy. He falls in love with Marilyn Monroe uh, because everybody in the goddamn movie falls in love with Marilyn Monroe. And I, and I look... I don't know. I know fuck all about Marilyn Monroe. I, I remember happy birthday, Miss the President, whatever the fuck. I saw her in Some Like It Hot, but I've never seen any of her work. I know the myth. Okay. That's what I know. I know the legend. What the hell was that? A fucking slam? What the hell's going on next door? What is it? What if he's pounding on that wall? He's like, no, quit talking about Marilyn Monroe. I can't take it. Um, I know the myth of Marilyn Monroe. You know what I mean? I know the, the breathless Kennedy. I know fucking everybody. I know all those kinds of stories that are possibly true. I know the one amazing fucking hot photo of her topless where she's got like a like an oversized like robe on and she's dunking cookies and some milk. Oh, man, is that a sexy photo? Well, OK, but it's continuing to slam next and more slamming is happening. I don't know what's going on next door. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, it's uh, I don't have a studio. I'm not, I'm not fucking famous. I don't have a fucking place. I don't have a garage like Marin does. Where he, uh, is, he, is he still in the garage? I don't even know. Why is he my go-to? But there's other shows. Like Never Not Funny has a fucking an actual studio and a fucking office building and shit like that. Earwolf, I think, has the Earwolf building that they purchased down in the center of Hollywood, if, if they even exist anymore. I don't know. I've, I Look, I can't keep track. My subscription to the podcast Gazette has fallen by the wayside. I wanted to keep it going, and I may have to renew it. Now that we're part of the Misfit Co-op, you know what I mean, with the Misfit Toys Co-op with our lovely partners, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know much about Marilyn Monroe. I know she's hot, and, and I know that you know the legend of her and the things that she did and things like that, and I know she died young, and then I know Elton John wrote a song, and that's about it. That's what you're going to find with me and my knowledge of Marilyn Monroe. But, but, uh, you know, I did also read, I remember that she was very talented, and I did see some Like It Hot, and she's great in that. And uh, and Beach loves her, and so she's like, "Oh my god, I want you to see the Misfits." And I'm like, "All right, let's watch the Misfits." And the Misfits is uh, essentially a two-hour play set in the uh, in the Nevada desert, where Clark Gable's like a former he's a former cowboy who's getting too old, and Eli Wallach is a pilot, and uh, and Marilyn Monroe is uh, is just an ingenue. But she's all scrambled up like she's totally frightened of her own shadow. She's getting a divorce in the beginning of the movie. Uh, And then fucking uh, what's his name? Kevin McClanahan, Kevin, I don't know, Kevin McReynolds. No, that's a Padre. (laughs) Former San Diego Padre Kevin McReynolds is in the film. He's terrific. Um, Kevin, the guy from fucking Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I don't even know his fucking name, but he's her husband. And uh and she makes a like whatever he meets her on the stairs and he tries to say, please stay with me. And she's like, no. And she goes in and she gets a divorce. Then she goes to a bar. She meets Gable and Wallach. Wallach already met her because he was trying to repair her truck. Uh, it's, it's whatever. I'm not. It's a play. The whole thing's a play. There's five characters in the goddamn film. One to the Clift, Gable, Monroe, Wallach. Yeah. And then this one woman who's in it who then fucking disappears in the middle of the movie. And when she disappears, her character, you even just go, oh, this isn't good for Marilyn. I mean, I. I will say this, you, you, in this movie, man, you just, you, she has this vulnerability where you just want to wrap your arms around her. You look, yes, we all want to wrap our arms around her because she's fucking hot. Um, but she has this vulnerability where you want to take care of her. And she also had that in some like it hot. Um, you know, you, you. You understand why the world fell for her when you see her in these certain roles. Now, I'm, I'm still going to watch Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and Seven Year Rich, all that kind of stuff. Beach wants me to see all of her movies, and I'll see them eventually. But uh, but in the two that I've seen, I can absolutely see why people were just like fucking biting, you know, <laughs> I say biting their knuckles like in the 50s, ang, 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 fucking staring at her. Even in The Misfits, which is a serious story with uh, with a script where everybody in the, in the movie is fucking sad. And... Uh, 
Arthur Miller wrote it, and and even I, I look, and I'm proud of myself because I was like, did he write this for her? Like, was this a play? Because it, it looks like it's a story about her life where she is constantly almost scared of her own shadow and every man in the fucking story wants her and tries to pick her up. Everybody, even a fucking mechanic, everybody just turn and she walks in, dude, she walks into a casino at one point and it's not even like, they didn't make it a point of it, of filming it this way. She just walks in and she's going to go to a table and every guy in the place watches her. They turn their head and they watch her walk by. And I could imagine that that's what it was like in real life. And so I asked Beej, I go, did Arthur Miller write this as his, is this what he saw her world being? where he was having to compete with basically every guy, every guy wanted her, all these different things. Uh, and we had, a, we had a long talk about it. It was great. I mean, I, I, I did not know what to expect. And watching it again, it's very much a play set to film. Uh, so she and I watched that. But then I made her watch True Romance, which is not a play. You know what I mean? It's like things change. Somewhere along the way, movies used to be like plays. You know, it'd just be like suddenly last summer, like I did a story before about fucking Montgomery Clift and fucking Elizabeth Taylor and a bunch of gay kids eating him in the street or whatever because he's a pedophile. Uh, but these are plays, essentially. And now, now they write a play with Iron Man in it, that, which is like, what are you doing here? Nobody wants to watch Death of a Salesman with Iron Man. <laughs> Holy shit, am I wrong, right? Everybody wants to watch Death of a Salesman with Iron Man. That's exactly what we want to see. I can pretend to fucking go, nah, nah, that's not what I No, bullshit. Are you kidding me? What if you watch Death of a Salesman, but instead of Willie Loman, it was Bruce Wayne, but he was broke, but he was still Batman. And so all of the pathos and anger he had about not making it as a salesman, he took out on criminals in the middle of the fucking night. How great would that be? Just fucking Willie Loman with abs. That's what we, you know, that's what he's been missing this entire fucking time. Willie Loman is sad, his kid, whatever the fuck. He's like, oh, man, whatever, I'm a schlemiel, I'm a schmo. And then he's got abs. It all changes, man. His whole life turns around. If fucking Stanley Kowalski was Willie Loman, we got two different plays that fucking rock. Two amazingly different plays. I'll tell you what, Blanche is like, is, is she happy with a Loman? Probably not. She's probably, you know what? She takes the Kowalski role. I think if Loman is Kowalski, then fucking Blanche takes over the Kowalski and fucking Loman becomes Blanche. Now you have to take Kowalski and you put him in fucking Death of a Salesman, he becomes the greatest salesman who, salesman who ever fucking lived, and the whole movie's different. God, look at me changing it up. Ah, oh, look what I've done. I've taken great works of art, and I've just, just with one switch, with one switch. Although it started with me putting Batman in there. It's, it's a couple of switches. Um, let's not put Batman in Death of, Death of a Salesman. Let's put him in Streetcar. I, all right, there you go. Batman can go ahead and take Kowalski's place. Bruce Wayne comes in. He's all magnetic. He's fucking wearing the fuck out of a T-shirt. And everybody's like, whoa. And he just, uh, I, maybe that's the move. Or, or Iron Man. <laughs> I want to have Iron Man. Not even Tony Stark. <laughs> I want Iron Man in Death of a Salesman. That's what I want. When he's, <laughs> he gets to go out. Uh, and he's just fucking gives that speech. All right, never mind. Uh, um, anyway. Uh, you know, maybe that's what the Obamas do with their Netflix fucking contract. Maybe they pitch that. They pitch switching Loman and Kowalski and then fucking giving Blanche. Blanche becomes Kowalski and Loman becomes Blanche. I love this turn of events. Uh, who can we cast? Who's that fucking uh, uh, Veronica Cox? Who's the transgender who is in fucking the Rocky Horror remake? Laverne? Laverne Cox. She's in it. She gets to be Blanche. Uh, because then she's like the fucking, she's the Kowalski Blanche. And then who gets to be the fucking Loman Blanche? Who's the Loman Blanche? Uh, fuck, who could make that? That'll be some, that'll be that fucking, that guy from the movie where the guy fucked a peach. It's Army Hammer and that little dude, uh, Chalamet. Chalamet, there you go. Timothy Chalamet is Willie Loman, but he's in starring a streetcar named Desire. And Laverne Cox is Blanche, but she takes on the role of being like the Kowalski because uh, she starts to dominate the relationship and Chalamet just doesn't know what the fuck to do about it because he's all mopey like Loman. God damn it, I rewrote it. Look at me fucking that. Uh, a salesman named Desire. God damn it, I'm a genius. Get the Obamas on the phone. Because I understand they're hearing pitches. Because that's what you do when you leave office in this country now. You go ahead and, and, man, you, and look, I don't care. Make all the money you want. But it just seems like with everything completely fucking rotting from the inside out, you would think that, and, and I, don't know what he, what, I don't know what I expect him to do. I don't expect him to do anything. Is, is Fucknet going to listen to him? No, he's not. He's going to show up. What's he going to do? Knock on the door of the White House? Hey, man, we got to have a chat here. Let's talk. And then Fucknet can be like, uh, wrong, no, whatever the fuck. He's just so, I don't even want to do his voice. I don't even want to think about him. 
that fucking debate this week. It's so funny. People, people, I, I, I was asleep because my fucking schedule is so bad, dudes. You have no fucking idea what my life is like these days. Uh, I go to bed at nine in the morning. I go, I go to bed at 9 a.m. I get up at fucking like noon and then I fall asleep later. It's like t- until three in the morning and then I get up and I'm up again until 10. Um, when, when you have no incentive to do anything, when there is no framework to your day, it's just, you know, you know what I am? This, I, you know, fuck, I'm a house cat. I live like a house cat. Like, I, I'll just, I can just fucking on the couch, I park it, and I sleep for fucking six hours. I get up, I eat. Sometimes the wet food, sometimes the dry food. Then I just fucking get the zoomies, I run them on my whole fucking apartment doing whatever. Listen to music, that's when I'm doing my stuff. And then I just go back to sleep on the couch or on a chair or on the floor. Something, and, like, my equivalent of, like, playing with a ball of yarn or whatever is just reading Twitter. I'm scrolling my phone instead of batting a ball of yarn. I'm a giant fucking house cat. Jesus fuck. Um, so I, I, with no framework, I don't know what to do with my, my life. So uh, on, on Tuesday night was the debate. I was supposed to stream. Uh, I had been up all night. I, I, I had gone to bed at, um, I don't know, I got up at 7 a.m. I I, but I'd gone to bed at 2. Oh, whatever. Who the fuck cares? Doesn't matter. I went to bed at number. I got up at number. Uh, and then I was supposed to stream and at three, at four in the afternoon. So then at three 30, I'm like, all right, you know what? I've been at, because I was at my desk chair all day and I'm like, all right, because I was answering correspondence and stuff. If I haven't gotten to you yet, I will. And then I went ahead and I sat on the couch. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go fucking sit on the couch. So I, I'll get, I'll take 30 minutes to close my eyes and refresh myself for the stream. And then also Beach and I were doing a double feature that night after my streaming, we we're going to watch movies back to back. And did I just hold up the number two with my fingers? You're goddamn right I did. Back to back. Uh, so Tuesday, I sat down on the couch at 3.30 and I sipped some ice water and I closed my eyes. And I fell into a black fucking hole. Like I fell into an abyss. I couldn't even... There was no dreaming there was no, it wasn't like, ah, oh, this is a luxurious nap. This was no, this was not refreshing. This was, this was sleep as punishment. This was my body going, hey, you know what, fuckhead? We're in charge now. You know what sleep paralysis is? It's when you wake up and you can't move, but you're wide awake, but your body's like, fuck you. All right, I had the other route. It was, it was almost as if my own body held chloroform over my face and put me the fuck out. My brain was like, fuck you, dude. My brain and body conspired and they fucked me and they put me right out. On the couch, 3.30, I fell asleep, and I didn't set an alarm because I just figured, well, I'm just going to close my eyes for just a second here. Uh, it was very much like when I when I used to work in a convenience store, and, uh, and there was a, a situation where I fell asleep in an office. Because, again, I'm sleeping in these bursts. I'm sleeping in, in three-hour bursts and being awake for 12 hours and then sleeping for two more hours. It's just a mess. So uh, I closed my eyes at 3.30, and then I'm not, I'm not joking. I opened my eyes. It was 8.45 p.m. So I, and I know you're like, well, five hours doesn't sound like that much sleep. Yes, you're right. But imagine five hours uh, of not moving. Like I didn't even, it wasn't like I was comfortable in a bed. I sat on the couch and I like sleeping on the couch. I like sleeping on a chair. I like, I do like that. Um, It makes me feel grown up. I've talked about this many times on the show. It's that thing where like, nobody can tell me what to do. I'm going to sleep on my own couch. Uh, cause when you were a kid, they'd be like, go to bed. If you're tired, go to bed. That was a, a mantra in my mom's house. If you're tired, go to bed. If you're tired, go to bed. Uh, and I, I'm not tired. <sighs> you know, your eyes closing, you're fucking drooling. Um, so I, I, I sat down on the couch and uh, there was no, if you're tired, go to bed. There was like, no, there wasn't, it wasn't a comfortable position. I wasn't, I was still wearing clothes. I don't like sleeping in clothes. Uh, so sure enough, man, I'm just out done. And I wake up at 845 and I haven't fucking moved. I had my feet up on the fucking ottoman. I had my head kicked. That was a cocktail bench more than an ottoman. And I had my head back. Uh, I had pillows on me and my arms at my sides. And I woke up in the exact in the exact same position. I mean, dudes, I, I didn't even fucking like I, I, I don't think I stirred. I, I you know what? Not a creature was stirring. That was me. I was that creature. I wasn't stirring at all. Uh, and I, and all the blood pooled like in my, it felt like I had just, you ever see return of the living dead when the dead guy wakes up and all the blood is pooled in his thighs and he's fucking in pain in his legs. That's what it was like. I tried to then stand up 
And my feet were like, no, that's not happening. And my legs, every, everything had just checked the fuck out. My brain was out. My body just got fucking ethered, man. It was insane. I was like a corpse. Uh, I, I just took a fucking journey for five hours and 15 minutes and never moved. Not once. Woke up embarrassed. Uh, you know, grabbed the phone and texted Beach. I'm like, man, I am so sorry. I literally just opened my eyes. And she's been very patient with me with my fucking schedule because I'm sleeping and waking up and all this nonsense. And then also there's a three-hour time difference. So it'll be movie movie night. So when I text her at 845, it's 1145 p.m. by her. We were supposed to get together at 7 my time, which is 10 her time, uh, which is also still too late. But I'm streaming from 4 to 6. Uh, it's a fucking three hours blows. So, uh, so I feel bad because I'm keeping her up to like 4.30 in the morning watching these fucking double features. And I'd watch three or four movies because I have no self-control at all. And I'm just trying to give it up. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's live our lives. Let's just fucking watch movies until we die. How about that? I'm going to wait until my eyes liquefy and pour into a glass and then I'll shake it up and I'll drink a cordia martini. How about that? Let's fucking do this because I don't have any control over my I have no more fucking, uh, uh, what's the word, over my body anymore. No matter it, God, fuck, how can I not pull words? Eh, it's because I'm, I'm fucking not sleeping. If I was sleeping, uh, autonomy. I have no autonomy over my own body. My fucking eyes just melted, and I drank them like a goddamn retina fucking retina rum. A rum retina, a retina and Coke. Fuck rum. I don't know, man. So I crashed out on fucking Tuesday, slept, and uh, that was the night of the debate. Now, I will tell you this. I was going to be streaming games and then going right into the movies anyway, because, uh... I'm, I'm never watching that fucking debate. Not in a billion fucking years. Who the fuck wants to watch that? And if you saw it, good for you. If that's a thing you like, or if it's a thing you felt you needed to watch as your civic duty, I'm not going to argue with you. That's totally fine. I'm talking exclusively about me, all right? And, I, and the way I see it, fuck that. I am far too old to subject myself to things that I will hate, and I, I know the second... Fuck neck open his mouth. I'd just be sitting there going, I want him dead. I like, I want to do something crazy here. Like, I'm so fucking furious. I want to just whip my phone to the moon. Um, it's just not for me. I don't, you know, I'll see the sound bites the next day, whatever the fuck. Cause I've told you, look, man, it's like, I grew up. I don't like hype. I don't like fucking pregame shows. I don't like any of that nonsense. I don't need a postgame wrap up. I watched it. I saw what happens. I don't need anybody to give me the prism of why the fuck they think the North stars didn't win. Uh, probably because they haven't been in existence for the past 30 years. But other than that, that's they've been doing pretty well for themselves. Uh, but I, I like I would never in a billion years watch the debate. I, I just I just wouldn't. And then I, of course, once I woke up at 845, then I, I, I believe I fell back asleep. And then I woke up again. And then I, I wound up talking to Beej, uh on FaceTime. And then I checked online to see what had happened. And then, of course... I saw what happened, and, and I was like, um, uh, but also, who who thought it would be different? Did you, did you think he was going to walk in like the Monopoly guy with a fucking beauty contest sash around his fucking goofy-ass chest and a monocle and a big-ass white mustache and a goddamn top hat and just take a ride on the reading and just be the, the perfect comportment of some sort of sophistication? No, that's never fucking happening. This, this guy's a gutter ball. That's all he is. He's a fucking gutter ball. And, and, uh, and, and sure, Biden's a fucking, uh, you know, 7-10 split or whatever the fuck. And, and, and you, you got to hope you can pick it up. But fucking fuck Nick is such a mess. Like I said, he's just he's just he's he's 300 pounds of loose change held together by a spray tan. And just and so, of course, he acted like that. That's what he did. He's fucking yelling that that dude. You know, if you were to ask me what his debate strategy was, I would term it shaking a baby. That that's it. His his debate strategy is shaking baby. That's it. That's his. He's as subtle as 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 punching a paper boy in the face and stealing his money belt in the twenties. I mean, what a fucking idiot! And then he's yelling. He's yelling at this guy. He's yelling at that guy. And fucking here's the thing I love too. And we've talked about this before. And I again, I don't I don't want to dwell on this bullshit. But this fucking guy is, uh, he's a jagoff, all right? He's just, he's just a fucking jagoff. We know this. But, but everybody should know it by now. It's been four years of him being a jagoff. But he's so used to having the, the press or the other fucking, you know, Republicans or whatever, they all cover for his ass. They don't, they don't say lies. They say he's massaging the truth or whatever, all of that bullshit. And you're like, so he's been able to do whatever the fuck he wants forever. And this has been his entire life. 
And then it comes out, like I said, even before the debate, the guy paid seven hundred fifty dollars in taxes, seven hundred fifty for two years, and whatever the fuck. And then, and look, don't come at me with your bullshit, because I saw this argument too. The next day, everybody's like, "Well, he paid payroll tax, and he paid he paid a, a sales tax, and he paid." I don't give a fuck. All right, all right, you you can't defend this shit. I, that's another thing that drives me crazy. If if you like him, fine. If if you're on board with this bullshit then climb aboard his slumped shoulders and spin clockwise down the fucking drain. All right? That's fine. I got no issue with that. If that's who you like, that's fine. But but don't try to convince people that he's better than he is or or don't try to tell us that oh no, we don't understand. No, we we very clearly can see it. We understand. If uh if you saw a dude acting like him on a subway platform, you would walk to your fucking destination. Don't pretend you wouldn't. He is every terrible thing you could ever imagine finding in a person you would run into in a normal situation. If you were behind that guy at the bank, you'd hate him. You'd all, he's, it would all be furtive glances at other tellers and people in line just going, get a load of this fucking guy. You know the phrase, this fucking guy? It was invented for fucking fuckneck. That's who it was for. He's this fucking guy. In any situation you could ever imagine. Studio 54, rich asshole comes in, tie around his head, and he's got two fucking girls half his age on his arms because his dad left him a fuck ton of money. Look at this fucking guy. Comes on out and says there's fine people carrying tiki torches and all sorts of bullshit, and he's not racist even though he fucking wanted the Central Park Five put to death, and he and his dad tried to conspire to keep people out of buildings. This fucking guy. And then he comes out of the debate and just starts starts screaming at the fucking moderator and screaming at the uh, other guy and just yelling and 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 blue in the face and just, this fucking guy. So he is. He's president. This fucking guy. It should say it on his fucking lawn signs. You know who I'm voting for? This fucking guy. Everybody knows exactly who you mean. You know. Sometimes that's a term of endearment. Very rarely, but it is. It can be. You know, if you're like, ah, this fucking guy in true romance, fucking walking, says it to Hopper, <laughs> this guy, and then he puts six in him. He puts fucking two in his face and four in the rest of them, because guess fucking what, man? This fucking guy is not a guy anybody ever wants to fucking be, and this guy's made a fucking life out of being this fucking guy, this fucking guy, and it's the thing where you collectively... Like, you think you talk about climate change? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know about climate change, but I can tell you that uh, we've got a wind problem in this country because every time President this fucking guy opens his mouth, the collective eye rolls across the nation generate high winds that knock over power lines for fucking miles. Everybody sighs and rolls their eyes. This fucking guy. And I know there are people who are like, yay, he's taunting the libs, whatever the fuck. And yes, I know B- Biden looks... In that debate, again, not even about facts. I'm not talking about facts or fucking what you bring to the table or or your debate strategy other than shaking baby. I get this, okay? But what I'm saying is in just as in you what they brought to the table as far as being loud, loud and engaging in in a conversation, uh, Biden brought a slingshot to fucking to, to, to a nuclear war. You know, like like fucking Trump's the Death Star and Biden's trying to find that garbage chute where you can shoot one laser in it and blow the whole fucking thing up. And he's never going to do it because he's 8,000 fucking years old. That's like if you sent Yoda into space to go shoot something into the fucking Death Star. No, man, he's chilling in the swamp. Put Biden in the swamp. Let him go back down to Dagobah where he can talk about his son and tell us that he's not a criminal. Uh, oh, 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 a criminal. <laughs> fucking unbelievable, man. Send Biden back. To, he's Yoda. He's fucking Yoda. And I don't mean like in knowledge. I mean in age. He's just an old Yoda. And and Trump isn't even a person. He's the fucking Death Star. He doesn't get to be the emperor. The emperor has real power. Fucking Trump has just been, he's built that way. He's he's large and he's imposing. And, uh, and he's got a flaw and a weakness. You just got to fucking find it. But he's also loud, and he tries to be as intimidating as possible. He'll float into your fucking orbit and try to scare you, and uh, and he'll and he'll take out Alderaan if you let him, just because the fucking princess wouldn't fuck him. Jesus, what a mess! What a fucking mess! And then he calls on like the the bullshit with the fucking the Proud Boys, the stand by and stand down or whatever, whatever the fuck. 
And everybody's like, he wouldn't decry white supremacy. I can't believe he wouldn't do it. Well, of course he wouldn't do it. He hasn't done it for four fucking years. He hasn't done it ever. Like fucking ever, man. Why are you expecting him to change? Who the fuck is expecting this idiot to change? Do I have to tell you again about the scorpion and the turtle or whatever the fuck as they go across the water and zing zam the fucking sting happens? Hey, man, you knew I was a scorpion. The fuck? This ass fuck's a, he's, he's a terrible guy. He's awful. He's the worst. He always has been. We all know it. And yes, I know there's a bunch of fucking delinquents out there who are like, hee hee hee, he's funny. I like what it does. When he's loud, it's the best. Shut up. Get fucked. And that's the same people who are watching Jersey Shore reruns because they didn't get it the first time. Get the fuck out of here, man. And yeah, I've got friends. There's there's guys I know like on Facebook who are like defend like I have a friend that is defending the Proud Boys and another guy is like he just he just tears Biden apart and the people will come in and go, "Yeah, but Trump's a fucking awful monster." And uh, he'll and he'll just go, "Biden is a drooling bill." Like he won't even because if you box him in to where he has to go, yes, I like Trump, I support Trump, then you just then you can look at him and just go, you fucking idiot. You know what I mean? But instead they take the safe position of Biden's terrible, Biden's the worst, oh, the Dems, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I get that. I agree with you. The Dems fucked up. Pelosi's a goof. Schumer's a, Schumer looks like McGruff the crime dog after a fucking rough night. I get it. They don't give a fuck about us either. But Jesus Christ, when you see that asshole suck all the air out of a fucking room... Just the, just the, he's like the reverse Hindenburg. He comes in in flames and then he still sucks in all the air to stay up afloat. He's never going to fucking crash. Jesus Christ. The incorrigible dirigible. This fucking guy. (laughs) Whatever. So I guess I don't know what I want Obama to do. Yes. Go to Netflix. Why not? Pitch, pitch fucking, uh, (laughs) <laughs> a salesman named Desire? Is that what it was? Uh, Death of a Streetcar? I don't know. Which one sounds better? <laughs> one of them will be the title of the show today. But man, oh fucking Christ. I don't I don't know. But the Obamas are making deadline. They're making fucking Netflix shows, which is, I guess, okay. I can't tell anybody what to do in this country. It's every man from fucking self now at this point. They're going to have guys guarding the fucking polls. He, he wants, like, poll captains. This is some fucking... We better shoot McCluskey in the throat bullshit, right? I mean, this is just nonsense. Do me a favor. Somebody take a meeting with Trump and hide the fucking uh, the gun behind the toilet with the chain. Get fucking Tessio on here, man. Let him do something. This is just fucked. Poll captains. Go and observe. Someone's, I read a thing where they were speculating that these guys are going to take it upon themselves to be poll captains. Because, look, you see, uh, when when all the, this, the, the demonstrations have been happening for BL, Black Lives Matter... And uh, then these fucking, whatever, Proud Boys, whoever the fuck, everybody shows up and they, they take it upon themselves to defend the joint. Like this ass fuck, the 17-year-old kid who shot three people. Like, they think they're protecting the country or whatever the fuck, our interests. Who the fuck knows, right? So when the fucking voting happens, there's going to be people lined up. They said Trump's poll captains are going to go in to the polling places and ask to see people's ballots to make sure they fill them out correctly. And and they said they do it, they want to do it to cause so much havoc that eventually they're just like... They won't get to cast votes or they'll delay the votes so long or they'll shut down the polling place because they will, they'll cause a problem. And I, I mean, you hear that, okay? And in your brain, you're like, well, hey, that's never going to fucking happen. They can't do that. And it's like, no, I, that could absolutely fucking happen. Of course it could. You know what else could happen? Some fuckhead in a fucking Ford uh, uh, F-150 could just drive through a line of people waiting to vote. Just fucking smash into them. Because then the ensuing chaos will shut down the polling place. I mean, I, I and look again, like I said, I don't want to be I'm not I'm not drudge. OK, there's no siren on my front page. I'm not trying to alert you to this fucking terrible situation. We all know it. We're all dealing with it, whatever the fuck. But every day that comes closer and everything that comes out of his fucking mouth, it makes me think more and more that this dumb shit could happen. Where they could literally like link arms and block a polling thing and, and where they won't let people vote or I mean, today in, in Pennsylvania or in Texas, in Texas, they, they <laughs> there's only one place in there's a like a county or whatever the fuck that is four and a half million people. There's only one place to drop off your ballot. The governor ordered the rest of them closed. Because he says they're investigating the, the possibility of fraud and they'll probably keep them closed until the election. So there's going to be one place 
where four and a half million people in a metropolitan area can drop off their ballots. In addition to this fucking this post office bullshit, and it's another thing, another nightmare scenario I heard. They were saying that because he keeps talking about the post office and the, and the fraud and the ballots, that there might be people who firebomb post offices and they burn ballots because they they are convinced that they're from Venezuela. So they might fucking oh we got to report that there's a bunch of Venezuelan ballots in here. So they break in and they fucking burn it down. And I'm like, I hear this shit and this is just. This is just guerrilla nonsense now. I mean, because, I mean, initially you're like, well, I hope none of this happens. And then you're like, well, maybe I guess maybe some of this can happen. But this other bullshit, like, dude, if they're firebombing post offices and driving through people waiting outside polling stations and asking to see ballots before you turn them in to make sure you didn't lie on your ballot, that's just that's that's just now fucking Generalissimo Francisco Franco. Right now. Now we're now we're just a banana republic at that fucking point. And we, we got to get fucking Woody Allen on the case. That's what we need to do. Uh, is it Sleeper? Was it Sleeper is that? I don't even remember which one it was. Take the money and run? I don't know. Maybe we're just a banana republic now. And I like bananas. I got no issues with those. I like gorillas too. But I, I like the different spelled gorillas. I don't know, dudes. What's going to happen? Are you as confused as I am? The only good thing is that the Obamas will have a couple of series running on Netflix. We'll be able to watch from our caves. <laughs> if if one person salvages the Wi-Fi, we can watch the Obamas cartoons that they create on Netflix as as the fucking T-1000 is destroying everybody in the street. You know that fuck neck went in and said, hey, can we develop a Terminator? You know, he did. You know, he's trying to do that. Hey, let's develop a Terminator. Are there any aliens? Like, again, if I was president, that's the first shit I would do. Hey, can we make a Terminator? No, seriously, like, or a RoboCop? Let's get a RoboCop. Can we do that? And also, what the fuck with aliens? Do we have a fucking, do we got a ghost skeleton? How about ghosts? Are those real? Give me the files, man. Like, he watches Fox News. What a waste of fucking time. I'd be reading all the bullshit files on J. Edgar Hoover, and I'd be like, oh, man, I can't believe Martin Luther King fucked all these chicks. Like, I mean, I would just be reading all this stuff. I would absol- I would just bury myself in the fucking minutia and horrible stories from the FBI files. You know what I mean? I mean, dude, I, I, I would not... I would not be president for longer than 90 seconds before I saw John F. Kennedy's dick. I got to be honest with you. I, I would be like, uh-uh, bust it out. Let's get the I car. The archives rolling, baby. Oh, what's this? The dress that J. Edgar Hoover wore when he got banged in the ass by fucking Brezhnev? I love it. Bring him on. Let's do more. Bring it all out here, baby. <laughs> oh, man. Dick Nixon's false teeth. <laughs> I would bring it all out. I would want every secret laid out in front of me. I wouldn't even think fucking twice. Fucking, I would, I would just, I would stack up fucking JFK's brain and Bobby Kennedy's brain and everybody else's fucking brain and see who took the f- most damage. I would recreate the fucking the the grassy knoll. My whole first year in office would be just me fucking exploring the scandals of the past and seeing what the fuck happened. I'd be wearing fucking Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Rider outfit, walking around with a goddamn saber pointing it at secretaries and shit like that. Dude, I'd be a terrible president. But again, that's why I said, fuckneck is how he wastes his time with Fox News. He could have been so much worse, I guess, now that I think about it. Although, how much worse could you be that you turn the fucking Obama's portrait into an ironing board? What a fucking idiot! Oh, man. You know, if you saw this shit in a movie, you'd laugh, though. Be honest. If there was some fuckhead who, like, took his previous... Uh, uh, the the previous president's fucking portrait and hid it in a closet and made it an ironing board or whatever the fuck, stayed up all night eating fried chicken and watching TV and then talked a bunch of shit. You'd be like, this guy's a fucking dickbag. I hate him. But at the same time, it's kind of funny. But the fact that it's real, it just, it's just, it's a fucking embarrassment. And again, the, the, the even bigger embarrassment is there's people who are like, yay, we love him. He's hilarious. No, he's not. He's a fucking idiot. He's like the worst in the business. Ah, people. How dare you? Oh, by the way, there's still a pandemic that's killing everybody. What a fucking mess this world is. All right. Uh, man, you know, I this show. All right. Again, please recognize that this show does not count against your uh, your yearly uh, amount of shows. <laughs> I wound up talking too much. I was only going to because I was going to put an old show here at the end. I think I should anyway. What the fuck? Yeah, I'll give you an old show because, I mean, what the hell have I done? I've still got to do plugs, though. God damn it. Should I miss, just make this a show? No, because I need to buy myself a week. That's the problem. This can't be episode 50. This has to be episode whatever the fuck. Episode uh, episode buying time. I will call it that, maybe. I don't know. Jesus. Um, 
<laughs> I don't I don't fucking know. What the hell was I even talking about? They have fucking Obama's in their Netflix deal. I don't know. I saw that today. It just made me laugh. Like, they got some fucking cartoon that they put out. I'm like, what? That's great. Our four, one, you know, Jimmy Carter's still, it's his birthday, I think. He's 96 years old. The dude's building houses for the homeless still, still giving them complimentary peanut butter. Still letting them all have a fucking run at Rosalind. You know, and talking to her and saying that she's okay. Is she alive? I don't think she is. She might have gone. She might have taken off. I don't know. But fucking JC is the man. What a fucking cool-ass president. Just a gentle guy. Tiny was serious about malaise. Got attacked by a rabbit. See, that's what you want in a president. A guy who gets fucking... Has to have his own personal night of the lepus. That's fucking beautiful. Then Reagan comes along and just fucking cowboys it. Then two years into his fucking presidency, he takes like five bullets. And then he fucking... He loses his mind, and he's got a he's got a fucking head full of jelly beans and whatever the fuck. And then I don't know who's running the country at that point. It's a big new Brzezinski. I don't fucking know. Whatever. What a mess. I'm sure Jezza would do a show about it. This whole thing has just gone to hell, and it coincides with my me turning into a teenager. I became a teenager in 1980, and then since then everything's gone to hell. I should have stayed a child. I should have stayed. I should have stayed young. You should have just fucking. I could have been like fucking uh, Tom Hanks in fucking Big. I could have just been fucking like a, a terminal fucking youngster. And then this world wouldn't have gone to hell. The Gordon Geckos of the world wouldn't have fucking savaged it and taken it apart. And the fucking the, the Arthur Millers of the world wouldn't have fucking written a play with Iron Man in it. Oh, how great would that be? Oh, dude. <laughs> death of an Iron Man instead of a death of a salesman. There you go. Death of an Iron Man. <laughs> I love it. Dude, I'm rewriting history. Not well, but, I, but I'm doing it. I'm certainly doing it. You can't stop me. God damn it. Uh, all right. You know what? I'm just going to I'll give you another show in addition to this nonsense. I didn't plan for this to be like this. I really didn't because I was just going to cut to the chase. Uh, the air just turned itself off. Uh, but, you know, you get to talk and things happen and, and this happens. Uh, here's what I'll say. I'll say this to you. Uh, well, should I do this regular speech? I don't know if I should. It's we're just about done here. I mean, well, we're not done. I'm going to throw in, like I said, I know I, I don't even know what we're at. What are we at here? I can't even say 50 like an hour. Jesus. Uh, oh, my God. I talked for an hour. I wasn't going to do that because the, the show I'm putting in is like two hours. And now you're going to be all you're going to get this. and You're gonna be like, yeah, a three hour show. And then you're going to be fucking mad at me because it's like, no, boo. Maybe I don't give you a new show. Right. Should I just give you a regular show? We'll call it episode buying time. But this isn't but it doesn't count toward your lo- regular episodes. Because I can't do episode 50 yet. There's a long story. It's a long story, ladies and gentlemen. You don't even really want to know about it. You don't want to know what's up. Um, I'm keeping it to myself. <laughs> I'm going to get fired from the co-op. Look at this. Already I'm fired from the goddamn co-op. I didn't think it would happen that way. I thought, it'd be, I, thought I would just ride it to death. I'd be like, yeah, cool. I'm in the co-op. And everybody else is famous. And they're like, nah, we're going to go do something else. And I'm like, please keep this co-op running. I must be part of it. I need to be part of something. It's so amazing. Uh, I don't What do I know? And again, who knows? I mean, I, I finally, this is the year, like with the germ and everything. They were like, all right, let's give Schmitty a bone. Let's get him into a co-op. And I'm like, finally, a fucking co-op. And then millions die from a germ in the street. Captain Trips comes along and gets me and signs me up for a goddamn podcasting. That's when I get my break. Hey, your big break will come along on the backs of a germ, on the wings of a germ. You'll be going ahead and doing the best you can, hiding in this misfit co-op with four famous people. Hopefully someday someone will notice you. Probably not, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter because the Civil War starts in four months. Yes, the Civil War starts in four months. Oh, the Civil War starts in four months. Don't you want to go and buy a gun? You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash the 40-year-old boy. You can uh, follow me at Instagram and Snapchat. Why, I'm at both of those places. Why wouldn't you go look? Instagram and Snapchat, I'm Mike40YOB. Go ahead and find me. Put me me directly into your veins. Shoot me into your veins, man. Not off with the 40-year-old boy coursing through your bloodstream. Why wouldn't you do it? Instagram and Snapchat, Mike40YOB. Check it out, man. Shrek it out, man. I'm there. I'm big. I'm green. I'm mean. I'm lean. I got a, I got a Princess Fiona on my jock. I got a fucking uh, P- Professor Farquhart, whatever the fuck, fuckhead, or whatever his name was. Uh, I got a donkey for a friend. All right. Uh, find me at all those places. Instagram and Snapchat, Mike40YOB. I'm also on TikTok, and I'll tell you this. I'm not doing any TikToks, but I'm there. 
Uh, I haven't opened the app in months, but I do watch it on Twitter. People put up a TikTok and I laugh and laugh. I saw something today from something called Nebraska Hype House or Hype House Nebraska. And it was it was just four kids doing a dance. And one of them was swinging a little dog. Oh, man, did it make me laugh. Just dumb stuff. I like dumb. So you're like, well, Mike, if you like dumb, why would you do some dumb TikToks? Well, because I'm old. You know, I do something and the kids are like, oh, that's all I needed to have some fucking Nelson Muntz on TikTok. Go, ha ha and fucking send me to the grave. I'll fucking kill myself. I'll open a fucking van because some kid was like, look at this idiot. No, love me. Instagram and Snapchat, Mike Forty or Zero YOB. Find me on there. I'm, I'm bad. I'm nation fucking wide. Uh, our good friend Ryan Dirks helps out with the web stuff. I got to give him an email at some point. Facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. KC Bills is our friend. He handles all the YouTube stuff and helps me out with that. Thank you, KC. You're a king. And our good friend David Hernandez, whom you might know and you might remember from uh, previous appearances on this show and also having his name dropped several times. Uh, he's David Mex Hernandez on Facebook. Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. What is he doing with his life? Well, I'll I'll tell you right now. The guy does everything. He's uh, he's all over the place. He's doing music. He's doing sculpting. Uh, he's uh, He's got Patrick Swayze with his arms around him suggestively as they make a bowl and stare at one another. God damn, when you want to make a bowl with Swayze, I'll make a Swayze bowl. Fucking press your dick into my back and make a bowl, Swayze. Let's fucking make this happen. I'll get a short bob. We'll get Whoopi Goldberg tell me I'm in danger. You in danger, Schmitty. And, uh, and I'll fucking bob it up. And Vince Chiavelli will yell at me on a train. Oh, man, look at all this that's happening. My life is coming together. I got a Swayze dick in the back, suggestively making a bowl, short bob haircut. I'm a danger girl. Fucking Chevelli, a mean Chevelli. I love it. Uh, or maybe Mex can do that. Originally, that was it. Why did I usurp it? I was giving that to Mex. Mex gets a Swayze dick in his back. Mex gets to make a suggestive bowl. Mex is, you're in danger. You in danger, Mex. Uh, Max, you in danger, girl. Uh, and then a Chevelli yells at a fucking Mex on the train, which is a lie because Mex would never be on the train. He was in a train accident once. And he was. Uh, and it, it derailed and, uh, and uh, I, this is really, this is not, I'm not even joking. Everybody in Mex's car died except him because Mex is Bruce Willis from unbreakable. Uh, <laughs> Max, uh, facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. He does all sorts of artwork. He does all sorts of music. He has a closed group like a closed group. If you go to facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez and you look through his photographs, you'll see the artwork he's done for me personally on my private page. It's not private, my my personal page. And then also the work he's done for the West Side 86 Jokers, where he does a, a Joker painting every couple of weeks and throws it up there and everybody loves it. Uh, he does amazing stuff. Plus, you can go ahead and flip through. Jesus Christ, someone that's pounding on my my door. What the fuck was that? Did you hear that? Is that the cops? What the fuck? I mean, there was like fucking earlier. My neighbor was slamming his door, but holy shit. Was that a crazy noise? You heard that noise, right? Isn't that a scary noise? That's from night of the comet. And I'm still talking like I mean, they're, they're out there. They're going to kick in the door. Dude, how you know, I got to be honest with you. I haven't done anything bad, but now I kind of wish I had. I wish that was cops because if the cops kicked in the door during the show, what a fucking fabulous ending. I always say the show's going to end in a gunshot. And now, I mean, we're so close to it happening. You heard that, right? That was the scariest fucking pounding ever. Because I don't I have a screen door, but it's like a metal door on the outside of my regular door. Uh, holy fuck, a moly, that dead. I jumped. Jesus. What are you doing? I mean, Amazon or whatever the fuck, they always leave packages outside anyway. Does he need a signature? A signatory? Negatory signatory. Uh, I don't know. All right. Yeesh. Oh, my God, I'm keeping <laughs> You have no idea. I mean, my blinds are closed and stuff, which is fine. But I'm also I'm ducking at my desk as if somehow he could see me by peeking through the blinds. Because, again, I'm, I'm assuming for some reason, if he pounded on the metal door that hard, he's got to have x-ray vision or some bullshit. Holy, you, you heard that, right? I'm not wrong. I mean, I'm I'm a good. I'm easily I'm about eight feet away from the door. I'm going to say I'm eight to ten feet away from the door. And uh Oh man, was that, that was an echoey blast. That was a, that was a fucking, that was iron fist. That was a dude with an iron fist. That was the Count of Monte Fisto who came up and just fucking pounded on the goddamn door. Holy Jesus. That guy's a danger to himself and others. And I, I don't know if I even ordered anything. Did I order anything? I don't know if I did. That's why I wondered if it was a cop. What are I, well, dude, what if we're being evacuated? I'm drinking water. What if there's a, because there are fires still. What if a fire got close? 
What if that's one of my neighbors trying to warn me that the place is on fire and yet here I am still recording? Oh, oh, oh dudes, I'll totally burn for you guys. Uh, like I said, like fucking Bill the Butcher said, I like a boy. Who's, I like a guy who's willing to burn for his swag. Uh, come closer, John. Close. Not going to bite you or not going to bite. He didn't say, yeah. Uh, all right. I think it's OK to raise my voice now and talk normally because I don't I think they went away. But man, that was a scary pounding. Don't you agree? Uh, they sing so good now. Don't you agree? Uh, terrible. All right. Um, the fuck are we talking about? We're talking about mechs. <laughs> what are we talking about? We're talking about Shaft. Uh, Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Again, you can check out all of his Joker's pictures. If you got, again, become his friend first at Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. And then go through his artwork on the photos and stuff like that. You'll see the cool stuff he's done. And then you'll realize he's got a closed group you can join. This is dumb. That's dumb. You're dumb. I'm dumb. Uh, why wouldn't you join it? You should. Uh, because there's a, there's a hot fucking uh, uh, chick in a swimsuit. Uh, I think her name's Bikini Barbie. No, Bikini Betty. Bikini Betty? Bikini Bonnie. I think it's Bikini Bonnie. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. She wears a bikini for me. Uh, Bikini Bonnie is there, and and you should check her out. And then there's uh, also a stove with a toupee on. And then there's, uh, I believe there's a pea, like a sexy pea. Or is it a sexy kidney bean? I don't remember exactly what it is. But it's out there, and it's waiting to be observed by you. Uh, why wouldn't you look at those things? And then there's a, there's a Chinese guy who will kick you in the, in the foot. There's all sorts of amazing things on this page. This is dumb. That's dumb. You're dumb. I'm dumb. Uh, and I understand this week they had, to, they had to throw somebody off the premises. Somebody was acting the fool, and Max went in and fucking creased him and threw him out the goddamn door. Uh, and that's, that's because Slumpus McGrumpus was like, get him the fuck out. Get him out, baby. And everybody said, no problem, Slumpus McGrumpus. And they all grabbed him and threw him out the door including Bikini Bonnie. Uh, but you should check out the This Is Dumb, That's Dumb, You're Dumb, I'm Dumb page. You, you'll try to join, and then you'll get some questions. Please answer them. And then uh, if you answer them correctly, you'll be admitted to the group. There's the air conditioning. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, although I, I will be honest, that if it's bringing in air from the outside, could it also bring in whoever pounded on my door? What if he slides through? What if it's Reed Richards, and he just gets all fucking skinny, and he slides through the goddamn vent? I don't like it. That was a lot of pounding. I still hear it echoing in my head. Echoes in my brain, man. Uh, so Max has got, you know, again, go like out. There's a there's a, a sexy noodle, whatever the fuck. Whoever's on the page is great. This is dumb. That's dumb. I'm dumb. You're dumb. Go ahead and join. It would be fantastic for you. Uh, please remember the man will. Uh, he also does artwork. If you want to commission him to do some artwork, you look at the artwork he does and you go, man, I like that. Well, he can do it for you uh, and he'll happily do so. But you got to contact him. Through Facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. He works in oils. He works in watercolors. Uh, as I mentioned before, he'll put a Swayze dick in his back and make you a sensual bowl. Whatever the fuck you need from the man, he can do it. Go ahead and reach out and hire him. But also, I'll tell you this, he's now uh, he's a multimedia superstar. He's not just working in oils. He's working in voice. Uh, and not just, and I don't mean just singing, because he's also singing all the time, but I, he's got a podcast, ladies and gentlemen. What? That's right. It's the Flem Cat Podcast, P-H-L-E-G-M, the Flem Cat Podcast podcast that's two word p-h-l-e-g-m-c-a-t the phlegm cat podcast is there in uh, in the apple podcast space wherever they have the best podcasts you could ever imagine go ahead and check it out you'll find his there it's there to be perused and listened to download it now and uh the new episode is up uh they're talking about buggery a lot of that discussion is going on uh, it opens with a Shawshank quote, and you'll understand why when you listen to the goddamn show. I will mention this. He talked about this, and this was a drag. He uh, he mentioned his daughter, Ava, and he mentioned that it's her senior year at Fancy Book College. And uh, holy fuck, am I the oldest man in the business? I used to uh, I used to play po- uh, peekaboo with that girl and make her laugh at the dinner table. Uh, I think she laughed at the goose call when I'd make a crazy noise. She was, uh, well, first of all, she's like the, just the cutest little girl uh, imaginable and now she's going to graduate with a degree she gets a sheepskin i'm i why am i even still drawing breath just throw me into the ocean and let me be eaten by whomever happens by because i don't belong to be i, I shouldn't be stealing air from the young any longer and let ava have all of the air she deserves it uh her and my godson deserve all of the air they could possibly have why am i stealing air from my godson and his sister it makes no sense uh, she's a lovely and talented woman now. And, and that just, that, that's great for her. Awful for me because I should be dead soon. 
Uh, Max will tell you if you listen to this week's show what he doesn't want to do to your biscuits. Uh, he cares about them. He does not. He tells you exactly what he doesn't want to do to your biscuits. You'll hear about squirrel lungs. Those are uh, also to be talked about. Uh, <laughs> I will tell you this, though. If you do listen to the show, you got to bring the pickles. Please remember that. you got to bring the pickles if you're going to listen to this show. Uh, Snagglefuck shows up for an interview uh, and tells you all about the group that I just told you about. So we're working double duty here with the This Is Dumb fucking group. Uh, but Snagglefuck does an interview with our good friend Max, and he tells, uh, tells you what to do and go to listen and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he, he, Max actually, and you know what? He rewrites Undercover Boss in this episode. You ever see the show Undercover Boss? It's where a boss is like, ha ha, I'm rich. I'm going to throw on a dirty ape and pretend to be a stupid cook. And then all the cooks are like, yay, thank you, sir. Because <laughs> what do you say? He comes in and he acts like a jag off. And then he's like, ha ha, I'm really your boss. And everybody's like, wee, that's awesome. And he goes, oh, and I know you're hard. your work is so hard. Here's a shiny new nickel for all of you, including you, Tiny Tim. God bless us, everyone. Fuck you, undercover boss. They should, you know what? Like I said, suddenly last summer when all the fucking kids eat the pedophile, all the fuck at the end of Undercover Boss, everybody should just do a blanket party and jump. The, like, say to tell the boss, go, oh, yeah, no, you didn't realize. No, if you're going to act like an employee, you got to get jumped in. It's like a gang. <laughs> you got to get jumped in. So he's all wearing his dirty apron. And he's like, well, I, you know, your monocle gave you away, you fuckhead. And then they beat the shit out of him. But then they're like, now nah, you're part of the group, under, Undercover Boss. Uh, but an undercover boss, that's the premise is it's like a sneaky boss is like, you know what I'm going to do? Watch this. I'm going to buy a pair of gloves and pretend to be a longshoreman. And then he goes, "Woo! I just worked for an hour. That sucks. Anyway, let's go to the bank and count all of my money. Uh, terrible. Just a fucking monstrous premise for a show. So uh, but Max decided, you know what? I'm going to flip the script on an undercover boss and I'm going to come up with culinary bamboozler. I won't tell you exactly what it's about, but it is absolutely the inverse of an undercover boss, and I like it. I'm excited about it. So go ahead and check that out as well. Uh, he, he bams out a couple of epiphanies because that's how he gets an epiphany. He bams it right out in your face. Uh, there's several songs. There's a rogue song. Uh, there's a there's a cool thing song. Look, man, I, I just I just go ahead and listen. I don't want to give too much away, but you need to go ahead and listen. But I will say this too, uh, and this I need to deal with right now. You know, David approached me and he's like, because I've been promoting the show and he's like, hey, man, could you do me a favor? Like, I want you to listen to the show and uh, and kind of give it more in-depth promotion, like uh, because, you know, we're trying to build up listeners and stuff. And maybe if you listen, you, you kind of uh, you point out some stuff that'll be cool. And people want to you know, if you they'll get them excited about it, they'll go ahead and jump on board. And I'm like, of course, dude, I mean, uh, whatever you need. Uh, and so I do. I listen to the show and I give you these these detailed promos. And uh, this week's show, he opens up and he's like, oh, man, you know, I wanted Mike to listen to the show and uh, and and boost my listeners. And uh, and boy, I'll tell you what, he uh, he he went ahead and he described it. and He went into detail and stuff on his show. And uh, and I think I got I think I got, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe six more listeners. And I'm like, uh, all right, well, way to way to cut the balls off me as an influencer right away. I mean, I, I literally you asked me to listen and I did. And then and then you're like, yeah, no, I just uh, he got me six listeners. Yay. And I look and that's just the way I hear it because I have fucking rabbit ears. But it was just like, uh, couldn't you couldn't you have even made up a number and said, hey, I've got a thousand people now who tuned in because Mike said so. Uh, nope. I'm worth six listeners. So if you've got a show uh, like the shows I'll talk about on the other side here, uh, you're going to get look, I can guarantee you this. You're going to get six listeners. Uh, and although he may have even, what if he was fudging the numbers? What if I got him one list? What if he lost three listeners? So he added nine and was like, yeah, I got six listeners. Awesome. Uh, I don't know. All I know is apparently I'm not the help that I thought I was, uh, but I helped the show gain six listeners. So that's big news. Uh, if that is the real number. But the show is called the Flem Cat Podcast. It's available wherever you can find your best podcasts. Like I said, it's in the iTunes store. Uh, it's in the Apple Podcast space. Wherever you want to find a show, you're going to find David's. And uh, also, I mentioned hiring to do your artwork, and you can check out his stuff at facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. You can also go to his website and look at a different kind of art that he's done in the past, something he could possibly recreate for you. It's just a way to get an idea of the, the depth, the breadth of what this man can do. Go to his website and check it out today. Artbydmh.com. That's A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H dot com.
show was was going to be uh, an old show. It was going to be just me 
uh, doing some plugs and then and then inserting an older episode. And then uh, look what happened. We we spun off the planet like a top. We talked and talked and we, we wound up filling the space. We, uh, we explored the space. We looked for some more cowbell. We did all of those things. Uh, and now I find myself in a position where I don't think I need to. I, I don't want to share an older show with you guys. I mean, I want to, but I don't think I should. I don't think I need to. Uh, I need to. I need you. What's that song? Uh, I don't think I need to. So, so hey, you know, just enjoy what you got. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> fuck you guys. Take this and fucking chew on it. Um, this nonsense where I put fucking Iron Man in Death of a Salesman. How dare you not think that that's enough? Really? You want, a piece, you want to step to me and go, you know what, Mike? We needed to hear an older show. I had it all picked out. I had it written down on this, this right here. This piece of paper right here, which doesn't sound like a piece of paper. It's a pad of paper. But I, I flick it with a finger. Uh, but someday in the future, as I have to buy more time another time, perhaps I'll give you this older episode. I have the hiccups now. Which is not good. That's not good during a broadcast. Hold on. I'm going to try to relax here and relax my epiglottis. <sighs> Do I have a gag reflex? What if I shove, I'll just shove uh, scissors down my throat. Maybe that'll uh, go ahead and, and, and extricate this. I'm trying to calm down now. <laughs> this is so dumb. I'm thinking if I talk like uh, in, a, in a quieter fashion, if I come at you guys, if I go straight up ASMR uh, or AMSR, whatever we do here. Uh, I can go ahead and calm my epiglottis. God damn, I need to calm my epiglottis. What's wrong? <laughs> Fuck you, epiglottis. How dare you get all worked up? I think my epiglottis is angry at me because it wanted me to go have it. Even it wanted to hear the older show. It's trying to figure out which older show I chose. Um, but I'll never share that secret with anyone. No one gets to hear it. That's right. Step off. Uh, because someday when I use that older show, you'll be like, oh man, Mike, we've been waiting to hear this older show. And I'll go, ha ha. That was supposed to be during the week of episode buying time. And yet I wound up talking myself into a tizzy. I worked myself into a wormhole. I, uh, I chatted myself into a cha-cha. That's a lot of fucking alliteration. All right, here's the deal. Do we have sponsors? You ask yourself, uh, but more importantly, you ask me, don't ask yourself that. Don't be like, Hey, does Mike have sponsors? Because you're not going to be able to answer that question very well. Uh, you should instead ask me. If I have sponsors, because I not only have sponsors, I have answers. I have answers about those sponsors. Man, it is fucking hot here, by the way. There's a reason the air conditioning's on. It was 105 yesterday, Wednesday. 105 goddamn degrees. Are you fucking joking? No, I'm not. It was 105 degrees. What the fuck, man? What's going on in this world? Fucking sun and, and desert and stuff happening. Then at, at last night, dude, it was 93 last night at fucking 9 o'clock. Jesus, what am I, in Texas? Oh, my exes live in Texas. That's why I hang my head in Tennessee. All right. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that is. It's a disease. There's a disease in me. Because I do it when I'm streaming on Twitch as well, where I, I just sing uh, nonsense. Which is fun. I like doing it. Uh, I, wish I, could, I wish I was a better singer. I wish I was a singer, period. Because then I would be doing it even more often. Uh, but now I will bust uh, things will pop into my brain and I'm like, ah, oh, you should, you know what you ought to do? Croon that. <laughs> what is that instinct? That's the weirdest instinct anybody could ever have in their goddamn life. You know what you should be doing right now? Crooning that. How dare you just go ahead and talk to people when you could be going out and, and being mellifluous? Why wouldn't you be mellifluous? Uh, <clears throat> why wouldn't I go like this? Ah, that's right. This is, this is the tone of voice you use when you're trying to give your epiglottis a break. Let's go ahead and let our epiglottis recover from all of the nonsense that was happening earlier. Uh, those hiccups, they left my body. I, I exercised the demons. I exercised them out. I earnest angel them out. I hit myself on the forehead. Thou hiccups come out. Uh, and I'm excited to go ahead and talk to you now with, a, with a, a working throat. My throat works, everybody. I know you were worried about it. You were wondering, hey, is Mike's throat going to be okay? You're goddamn right it is. Oh, my throat is perfect. Sponsors, what? Yes, we have them. The Paranoid Strain Podcast is a sponsor, and uh, I know what you're thinking to yourself. Well, we've heard all of their episodes. Why? Uh, what is there to talk about? I'll tell you this. We're talking about the new episode. What? Yes. That's right. You know, I told you it's coming out in chunks this year, uh, first and second and third parts, fourth parts, fifth parts, eighth parts, all of that. But right now, we're only up to the third part. This is uh, episode three. Or I get, I, what would I call it? What I call it? Like round three? I don't know. Look, man, he's breaking up the show into chunks. So this is the third chunk. Enjoy this third chunk. 
baby. Uh, this is, uh, you know, historical political conspiracies. There, the air, ooh, the air went off. Shh. Historical political conspiracies. Uh, the Paranoid Strain available right now in the iTunes store or in the Apple podcast space. Go ahead and download it now. Would you? Could you? Should you? I think you should. I think you can. I think you will. Uh, it's available right now in the iTunes store. Paranoid Strain. The Paranoid Strain. Look it up. And leave a review in the iTunes store. Leave a note that says, you know what? We love this show because Mike Schmidt told us to listen and then we did and it was awesome. Uh, and also mention that you like my show. How rude would that be if you did that? Oh, man, this fucking fearful Jesuit. He puts out an amazing podcast. We listen to Mike Schmidt's 40 year old boy and we love it. Anyway, this fearful Jesuit. See, that's just uh, don't do that. That just seems to be intruding on everybody's good time. Don't do that. Just go ahead and leave a review about the Paranoid Strain podcast. If you want to go ahead and let Jesuit know that you heard about this show, uh, his show through me, you can write him a note at this address, theparanoidstrain at gmail.com, theparanoidstrain at gmail.com. Send him an email. Tell him you love the show. Tell him you heard about it through me. Again, it lets him think that I'm a hitter. Keeps him sponsoring the show, which keeps me in the filthy money, the big time, big time lucre which I need. God knows I need uh, the fearful Jesuit money. I need monk money. That's what I need. I need monk money. You're like, you mean milk money? No, man, I need monk money. I need mad monk money. Go paint me a fucking ship on a grain of rice and hand me a handful of green monks. Don't talk for a year. Uh, These are the rules for the monks. Paint me a ship on a grain of rice, hand me a handful of green, and don't talk for a goddamn year. And then, of course, paint the fence and sand the floor. Uh, (laughs) No, wax the floor? Paint the fence. Uh, JC Penny, 398. All right, get a belt, monks. Uh, the Paranoid Strain podcast is available right now in the iTunes store. And part three, as I said, is up and rolling. Leave a review, please. And write him a note at his email address, which I just gave you. God damn you, yods. Fighting me. I don't like it. Uh, I will tell you this. This show, I was told, and I, there was a bait and switch involved. And I don't care for this, quite frankly. I was told uh, that we were going to delve deeply into the Freemasons. And right in the beginning, he's like, hey, man, we're not going to talk too much about the Freemasons. And I'm like, no, Freemasons. Oh, man. That's why I'm here. You talk about the Freemasons. You've got me. I'm there, baby. I'm I'm in town. I line up popcorn. I sit in the front fucking row and I just stare right at you. Hit me with that Freemason knowledge. But I will say this. This is a little strange. He's like, yeah, man, we're not going to get totally into the Freemasons. And then the show is uh, it's very much about the Freemasons, which I'm like, what the well, why did you? Why did you try to bamboozle me in the beginning? I don't care for that. I don't like this. I don't care for this back and forth, this up and down, this in and out. Don't don't fool me. Don't don't make me try to snatch the pebble from your hand, grasshopper. Uh, but he did. He made me, and I snatched it. Uh, you got to listen to the show because right in the beginning, Dana refuses to say something. Uh, you know, our our boy Jesuit gives her a thing. He gives her a script, and uh, she says, "I'm not saying this. I'm refusing to say it." And then he tells her that she has to. And then he gets mean. He's like, he's like say it. And she's like, uh, I quit. And she leaves. And uh, I got to say, I'm team Dana, especially after I heard what was uh, she was supposed to say that then gets said. Uh, I am absolutely team Dana in this. And not just because she's Dana Unicorn and I want to meet her someday, but also because I'm on board with her and her, her instincts. They were good. Uh, Dana quits, walks out inexplicably. You hear her car. <laughs> And she drives away, which makes no sense. Uh, but then luckily, everything is all OK. It's courtesy of a keyboard. It makes a sense. It's it's really uh, it's a lovely piece of business. You need to check it out. Um, you know, you want to hear about uh, you hear about Ben Franklin and his hoodwinking ways. You don't want to hear about Benjamin Franklin and his hoodwinking ways. You'll hear about the many headed, the many headed, the many headed hydra of uh, despotism, uh, which is hard to say. Uh, you'll hear the phrase blood soaked and occultish. Go ahead and look for that. If you're, you know, this is like bingo. You're trying to fill a bingo card. Uh, if you want to hear about Misen's mold bug and debunking the American Revolution, that's a, that's right there, locked and fucking loaded. There are so many asides. There's asides within asides in this goddamn show. Uh, you'll hear about the fraternity of privilege. You'll hear about an engine of Satan. Uh, you know who we hear from? Get this, motherfuckers. Brace yourselves. Motherfucking Bernard Balin is in the house. Yeah, that's right. You didn't think they'd get him, did you? You thought to yourself, well, there's no way. I mean, Fearful Jesuit is one thing. He can barely afford Dana Unicorn because she's really pricing herself out of the stratosphere. And there's no way they're going to get motherfucking Bernard Balin on board. Check yourself, motherfucker, before you wreck yourself. Because motherfucking Bernard Balin is all over this goddamn episode. <laughs> you hear about a Mason hit squad. A guy tells a story about a hit uh, and then wraps it up. This is my favorite thing in the, in the show, I think. This guy tells a story. Some guy's mean to the Masons. And he's like, I'm going to print all their secrets. 
And everybody's like, all right, well, then go ahead and do that. So then he starts to print the Mason secrets. And the Masons are like, what the fuck? So then he goes to a, like a, a, a newspaper building or whatever the fuck. And some dudes pull up and they they grab him. Is he go- oh, no, he go- oh, no, I'm sorry. He goes to jail. He goes to jail. Uh, they, they gin up a charge that he didn't return a shirt and tie that he borrowed. He goes to the clink. He gets bailed out by a couple of fellas. Steps outside. A couple of dudes throw him in a carriage. He disappears. Nobody ever sees him again. This is the story that the, this guy tells it, and he tells it, you know, he's just like, oh, this dude, he, he's uh, he's exposing the Masons, and he tells it, and he goes to jail, and then they bail him out, he gets thrown into a carriage, and he's never seen from again. They think maybe he was thrown in the river, and then the guy, here's how the guy closes up this anecdote, <laughs> not even joking. Nobody knows if that really happened. <laughs> Wait a second. Why are you telling me this anecdote if right at the end of it, you're going to invalidate this anecdote? I don't care for this business. I don't care for you trying to spin a yarn and then immediately telling me it's not something I should put any faith in. Because you know what? That doesn't allow me to put any faith in you at all as a storyteller, as a historian, any of those things. Now, this isn't even Jesuit. This is some other dude who gets dropped into the fucking show. And he's oh, he just, he just oh, this guy, he's exposing the Masons. He goes to jail. They bail him out. Then two guys throw him in a carriage, which also... We've seen movies now, right? And we have cars and hitmen. And, you know, a guy gets fucking hit on the head with a sap or whatever and thrown in the backseat of a car. That's one thing. But if you throw a dude in a carriage, like, how the fuck can you spirit him away? For he yells, the guy yells murder three times and nobody helps him. Then he gets thrown in a carriage and then nobody ever sees him again. Uh, and by the way, nobody knows if that really happened. I don't know. <laughs> so don't put any faith in it. Uh, you'll hear about Father Coughlin. He's a great guy, he's terrific. Uh, Kenny Loggins makes an appearance for some strange reason. It's, uh, it's, you know, look, it's fucking Jesuit. He's doing what he's doing and he's got to tell the story and he's got to bring you the framework. He's got to expose these conspiracy theories his way, baby. You want to hear about licentiousness? You'll get it. You want to hear about despotism? You'll go it. You want to hear about perfidy? You'll know it. It's there. All of those things and more. Uh, I, I can't look, I can't, I can't run it all down. I'll tell you more next week, probably because I don't think I'll have a new episode out next week. But even if he does, but I have, I have more to tell you, but I can't do it. I don't want to give it away. Download it yourself. List. Jesus Christ. There's banging outside. Oh, I should tell you when I took a break, I went and look, I did have a delivery. Uh, and even worse, here's what this fuckhead did. He banged on the door and then he took the box and he jammed it up as like really hard against my screen door. So then when I tried to open my screen door, it kept catching the box and it wouldn't open. I'm, I'm trapped in my own apartment. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I'm, I'm hoisted by my own petard. Because this fucking guy from Amazon storms through and King Kong's the fuck out of my door. And I'll tell you what, King Kong ain't got nothing on him. (laughs) He'll put you in Pelican Bay. Uh, Paranoid Strain. It's a podcast available now in the iTunes store. Go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and download it. Go ahead and read it. Go ahead and don't read it. Listen to it. It's amazing. It's something you should love to hear. Uh, And our good friend Fearful Jesuit is bringing you the fucking heat, man. Him and Danny Unicorn doing amazing things, locked in the broom closet and putting out scripts and shows, and uh, and you'll love it. Go ahead and download it. The Fearful uh, Jesuit Show, the Paranoid Strain Podcast, available in the iTunes store right now. Leave a review if you would. Send them a note if you would, uh, and download all of them. Listen to them. They're great. Uh, you want to hire me for something? Why wouldn't you, right? You should hire me. Uh, well, actually, before I, you know what, before I get into the hiring, let's talk about this. Did you know this? Did you know I'm part of the, uh, the, the, the new Misfit Toys podcast co-op well i am the misfit toys co-op it uh, i'm very lucky and honored to be involved because it is uh it's heavy hitters it's all fucking big timers it's big fucking shooters and i i, I normally wouldn't be able to hang and bang with these people i know look i think i can I, i'm not sure if any of these people can do what i do but it doesn't matter because they all do what they do and they do it extremely well they don't need to concern themselves with doing what i do do you get it now god damn it uh, of course, leading it off, in my opinion, at the Misfit Toys Co-op, we've got the great Never Not Funny, the gold standard of the chat show podcast, my good friend Jimmy Pardo, my good friend Matt Belknap, my good friend Elliot Hochberg, my good friend Garen Cockrell, my good friend whoever's in the guest chair. I love them. They love me. Uh, we're a happy family with a knickknack knack Give the dog a bone. This old guest came rolling home to Never Not Funny and busted out some great material. Go listen. Go download, get your finances in order to get the the, the fancy uh, sidebar ones. Listen to the free ones as well. The Never Not Funny Show is available for you wherever you go get podcasts. Doug Loves Movies. That's our great friend, Doug Benson. Uh, he's It's another show that's uh, the gold standard of movie podcasts. A lot of gold standards going on. I, I, I should move to the Bitcoin. Maybe, that, well, maybe the Todd Glass Show will be the Bitcoin of podcasts. Uh, Doug Loves Movies is available right now in the iTunes store, as always. Again, there's so, and there's, look, dudes, if you're just getting on board with these shows now, Never Not Funny, Doug Loves Movies, uh, there's a, there's a, 
years and years and years of shows for you to catch up on. Now, I know you've got your other shows that you listen to, including this one. Uh, but all of these people do amazing work, and it's worth exploring their archives, and I think you should. Uh, Doug Loves Movies is available now. Check it out. I think the new one just came out. I forget. I think it's Thursdays, and today is Thursday. Uh, the Todd Glass Show, which is beloved because Todd is uh, – dude, I saw Todd – before I was even doing comedy, I saw Todd at the Santa Monica Improv. I saw him doing stand-up on his truck. He used to drive with his truck and pull up this, like, he had a, a thing that he would pull down that looked like a brick wall, and he would do stand-up. He would busk and and crush it in the parking lot after shows. He just, he's one of the most creative and, and talented, one of the best minds you're ever going to find in comedy. Todd Glass is the fucking greatest. Go check out the Todd Glass Show, available now in the iTunes store. And, of course, the always popular, the incredibly funny, the amazing writer, the talented expressionist. Is that what I'm calling it? Impressionist? No, expressionist. Uh, Jen Kirkman is incredibly funny. So in tune. And, and dude, not only this, get this, not only funny, but also sharp. Just fucking in tune with what's going on in the world today and a, a unique viewpoint and able to bring it to you in a way that nobody else can. Jen Kirkman, one of a kind. Her show is called No Fun with Jen Kirkman. The name keeps changing. It's, I think it was like, uh, let's have fun with Jen Kirkman or whatever the fuck. It doesn't matter what it used to be. What it is now is no fun with Jen Kirkman. Go hear her take on the world. Go hear her take on her life. And, and, and also, I think you can actually connect with her via the show. And she's, uh, she's commiserating with a lot of people that listen to her and our fans. Um, all of us, I think, are really kind of closing ranks on our communities. You know, I reach out to you guys and, and, I, and, and we're all... Because it's such an intimate medium, podcasting. And now with this world looking like a goddamn fucking propeller to walk into, I, 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 I think we're all finding strength in the people who've supported us for very long times and, and people who've always been there for us. And, and like you guys with me, you know, and that's why I feel comfortable telling you, go listen to Jen, go listen to Ty Glass, Doug, go listen to Never Not Funny. Uh, these are friends of mine and, uh, and they do good work. So I... I I can think of no greater gift on my behalf to them than to share you guys with them because uh, you've been with me forever and loyal and great and supportive and uh, knowing what you bring to the table, sharing you with them is an amazing gift and I'm, I'm very happy to even recommend it and, uh, and I hope you'll take me up on it. That'd be pretty cool. Who wants to hire me? Uh, I know you're thinking to yourself, well, dude, this Misfit Toys co-op is bringing in tons of dough, right? Well, you know, the, we're buying time this week for a reason. I've got to learn how to, how to set, put in ad breaks. Because, uh, look, all right, here's me whining. And uh, because I'm me, you know who I am. <clears throat> but uh, remember I kept saying, I don't know how it works. Oh, now, now I know how it works. I have to do it. Um, I have to take a tutorial. I've already taken one conference call this week, and now I have to have a class where <laughs> I get to sit down and get shown where to put the brakes in for the people on, on Art 19. And I, I don't know, whatever. I don't know anything yet. i got to take a class. So I have to answer that email and schedule the class. And, uh, and once I do that, then the ads will come rolling. I also had to do a thing this week where they sent me, they sent me a spreadsheet. And they're like, uh, hey, here's all these advertisers. Pick who you would like to have. Pick who you wouldn't like to have. Uh, and it's like topics as well as individual advertisers. And I'm, I'm literally, I'm just like, look, if I'm fucking doing this, I'm doing this. So I said yes about a billion fucking times. What the fuck am I going to be picky? Uh, hold on, socks? I couldn't possibly sell socks on this podcast. Fuck off. Uh, but I will admit there were a couple that I, I did not uh, find that I thought would be a good fit for the show. I'm not going to get into it, but, uh, but, it was, it was, but I will tell you this. It was fucking cool just to be asked. Remember, because I told you, I, go, I don't know what they're going to put in here. I don't know where they're going to put it in here. Uh, well, they're making me take ownership of what is mine, and they're making me cooperate and work along with them, not just fucking, you know, trust them to do the work. They want me to learn, and, and that's always a sticking point with me. You know that. I don't like to learn. I fear change. I don't want to do any new stuff. Uh, but if this is going to bring people on board, and, and then uh, then then that's important. So I, I need to learn. I took the conference call this week. I talked. It was fucking six people, uh, me and five people, and they're giving me tutorials and telling me what to do. And it was cool. I mean, I, I had a great time talking to them. It was great. It wasn't a super long call, but and then I got an email. I had a DocuSign something. I got a DocuSign another thing. They sent me an, uh, something else. Jesus Christ, dudes! Uh, you know what? Brace yourselves. It's the return of Joe business. 
You're goddamn right it is. Because I don't, I, you know me, I've just, Joe Business has been on a shelf. I don't know what the fuck, but now I got to be Joe Business. I got to learn about ads and pick ad companies, and I got to find out where the break goes and all this kind of shit. Jesus Christ, Joe Business is back with a goddamn vengeance. I might be Joe Vengeance. You know what? Forget Joe Business. I might be Joe Vengeance in the house. Who wants a piece of Joe Vengeance? All right. Uh, I have blown my throat out for some reason. Why? Is, am I just old? Do I have nodes? I might have nodes. I just don't sound as good to me now as I sounded earlier in the show. But hi, oh, hold on. Let's do this. Hi. How are you? All right. Never mind. Uh, did you know I'm on Cameo? Well, I am. God damn it. I'm on Cameo right now. Well, not right now. How weird would that be? What if this is, the, this is a Cameo I sent somebody? This week's episode, Buying Time, was purchased by somebody on Cameo. Hey. Uh, Cameo, you can go ahead and put it on your phone. It's an app. It's, uh, I, it's just, I think it's just Cameo. You find it in the app store or I went online. You go to bookcameo.com or Cameo. just Google Cameo. You'll find it. They're fucking huge. Now they're gigantic stars. I got into the ground floor. It was awesome. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm grateful to my buddy, Bob, Bobby G, Bobby G, Bobby G, who, uh, who got me in with the Cameo people early. And uh, just the very fact that I'm on the platform makes me happy. So uh, if you think to yourself, well, we got to hire Mike to do a cameo to do something, because what is it? It's baseball playoffs. If you want me to mock a team who's lost, uh, if you want me to, to praise a team that's won, uh, if you want me to, to get into talking politics with your friends, oh, don't, that's what I want. Dude, hire me to do that. If you have some MAGA friend, let me, get, let me taunt them. If you have a Biden friend, I'll be happy to do them as well. If you're uh, if you're uh, in South Carolina and you want me to go make fun of a Lindsey Graham supporter, which makes no sense at all, that's that's really that's a deep cut. I don't want to do any of that bullshit, but I'll do it. I need twenty dollars all the time, so hire me to do any of this stuff. You want me to tell your aunt she's hot? I can do it. You want me to tell your cousin you want a banger? I can do that too. You want me to tell your daddy you should shape the fuck up? Because mom's going to leave him and then you're going to end up having to live with him. And then you're going to have to go out to the garage where he keeps all of his nails and screws in the same coffee can, no matter what size they are. And you got to try to build something, but it's all fucked up because he doesn't have a system. And that's why mom left him because he could never keep anything fucking straight. And why does he always smell like beer and stop wearing fucking white T-shirts around the goddamn house? Put a splash of color in his life because it was that drabness that caused mom to walk out the goddamn door. And now you got to go outside again and take that Hills Brothers fucking can off the shelf and try to build a birdhouse because your dad's too fucking drunk sitting around in a wife beater T-shirt and looking out the fucking window wondering what he did to himself. Well, there you go. I can do that. Hire me to do that for your dad. (laughs) I'm happy to do it. I believe me, I have enough vitriol and rage at my own father that if you want me to go ahead and tell your father he's a dick, I'm happy to do it. That that should be my specialty on cameo. I'm the guy who tells your dad to fuck off uh, after he got pegged. You know, that's what happened. He fucking, you know what? He let your mom peg him and he put the dog collar on. She, drank, she flicked ashes in his mouth and then she never looked at him the same again and she walked the fuck out. And now, like I said, all of his screws and nails are all fucking in one coffee can. Uh, this poor man can't even arrange a toolbox. He looks out the window and he realizes his wife left with his manhood. You know what she left? The dog collar. Oh, that's right. And he looks at it and he's furious. And he thinks about hanging himself with it. He's not going to lie to you. He's tied it on the shower rod a couple of times. He just thinks he's probably too heavy for it. But one of these days he's going to give it a try when you're not around. So do me a favor. Get some cameras. Set up some cameras in your house. I'm worried about your dad. Uh, I'm worried about Pep Pep. Is that for a dad or a grandpa? Well, I don't know. He can't be that old. Is he that old? I don't know. He's got a mouthful of ashes. What the fuck do I know about this guy? All right, take care of your dad. But if you want me to call him on Cameo, I can do that. I'll talk him out of all this bullshit. You want me to talk your dad out of suicide with a dog collar? I can do it. Hire me for Cameo. I'm happy to go ahead and give him a shout. Uh, it's available on your phone or available online as well. Go ahead and do that. Yes, do that, I say. Uh, you know, if you go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com in the upper right-hand corner of every page, you'll find a little Schmitty with his pocket out. It says donate, and you can do that. You can send a one-time PayPal amount. You can go ahead and do a monthly PayPal sending uh, cash. That's pretty cool. Whatever you want to do is fine. Supporting the show is really key at this particular junction because God knows what the fuck's going to happen going forward. Uh, even with the Misfit Toys co-op, who knows? I can still use your support. It makes me very happy. Thank you so much. Go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com. Go to the upper right-hand corner, and there's going to be a little Schmitty. Click on him and set up a PayPal, either a one-time deal or a monthly payment. Whatever you want to do. It makes me happy that you would even think of me. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to do this. I haven't done this in a fucking long time because of the germ, but why not? Who wants to drive for Uber and Lyft? 
I'm rolling the dice on this because, uh, again, I don't know what people are doing, if their jobs have changed or they want to get some extra cash, whatever. If you want to do that and you want to use my code, if you want to become an Uber driver or a Lyft driver, use my code at Lyft. It's Mike720057. That's M-I-K-E 720057. Uh, and I would suggest to use all caps on the mic. At least that's how they show me to do it. So I, I, I can't go against that. Mike 720057. That's for Lyft. If you want to become an Uber driver, and oh my God, why wouldn't you? You can use the code DJZW1YTTUE. That's DJZW, the number one, YTTUE. All lowercase on the Uber one, as far as I know. Uh, that's if you're a first time driver, don't this, if you don't do this, if you're already driving or any of that stuff, but if you want to go ahead and if you're trying to make some extra money for the holidays, if you want to go ahead and become an Uber or a Lyft person in the face of the pandemic, you want to try to make as much money as you can. Uh, my code is out there and it really helps me. So go ahead and use the Uber code D J Z W one Y T T U E. Use the Lyft code Mike seven, two, double O five, seven M I K E seven, two, double O five, seven. Uh, if you want to drive, that'd be cool. And if you don't believe me, I don't blame you, but I figured what the hell, you know, the germ is here. Holidays are coming up. People might be looking for a side hustle. If you're going to go with a side hustle, then go ahead and use those codes. It would really help me out. Uh, and also we've got the Patreon page. As you know, Patreon is, uh, it's keeping us afloat, doing a good job of it. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who's gone ahead and donated and signed up. Uh, we lost some people in, uh, in September. But uh, if we can gain more people, that'd be pretty cool. I'd appreciate it very much. Think of me at patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. That's patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. Go check out the page, sign up, and become a patron of this show. That would be fantastic. Again, as I've mentioned many times, uh, I appreciate all of the support. I appreciate everybody stepping up and doing what they can to help me and help the show. Uh, but I will tell you this. If you're going to do it, if you ever thought to yourself, well, let's go ahead and help Mike out, this is a really good time to do it. In the face of the germ and every other goddamn thing we've got going on, go ahead and step up, please, and uh, and do me a favor. Uh, become a patron at Patreon. Patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. Think of me, think of garbage, think of Akeem, and become a patron over of this show so I can go ahead and keep bringing it to you every single week, whether it's a an older rerun show or it's a show like this that was supposed to be a rerun and then turned into something else because I wouldn't shut the fuck up. Uh, you know what? I've got uh, channels. I should tell you about those too. What the hell? Why not? You know, I got a YouTube channel. I do. YouTube.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can go ahead and check that out. Uh, there's uh, every podcast is up there. The archives are there. Uh, YouTube.com slash the 40 year old boy. That's available. Go to the YouTube channel right now. I have often thought about putting other things on the YouTube channel as well. I've been doing taste tests on Twitch of like chips and weird stuff. Uh, and everybody's like, you should do that on YouTube. And I'm like, that's a great idea. And then sleep. Uh, but eventually, maybe I'll do that. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, and then I stream on Twitch. What? Yes, I do. Twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy. Twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy. Come over and follow and subscribe to the channel, and you'll always know when I'm on. I don't have a set schedule. I usually go on around 4 o'clock in the afternoon on weekdays. Uh, I'm off on Saturday. I'm off on Sunday. Uh, and I've been thinking about taking Wednesdays off because of, uh, you know, to do the podcast, but I mean, whatever, I didn't do the podcast on Wednesday, but I streamed yesterday, but I'll stream today cause it's Thursday. Uh, but everybody's gonna be like, huh, what are we going to do? We're going to listen to the new Mike show. We're going to watch Mike Twitch stream. Who knows? Uh, you know what you can do? Watch the Twitch stream and listen to the show at the same time. That's great. That's just, that's just like, you're getting fucking spit roasted by Schmidt. How you like that? How you like me now? All your holes filled with Schmidt. Uh, twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. We've been playing puzzles. I've been playing boogie down weird legs. There's all sorts of different things. And sometimes I just talk. I'll sit there and ramble. I not even joking. I think the last few times I've done it, I just, I've talked for 90 minutes and then it's been like, Hey, should we play a game? (laughs) Dumb talking in circles like a maniac. You think this podcast is fun? Well, go check out the stream, man. I'm talking in fucking circles the whole time. Don't you love me? Do you love me? You really like my limousine. You like the way the wheels roll. All right. Twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy. YouTube.com slash the 40-year-old boy. Look at me. I'm a goddamn cottage industry. You got me on radio. You got me on TV. You got me on YouTube. I got my own stations. I'm playing station-to-station baseball with you. Let's bunt and get you over. Let's score some runs together. Let's do it together right now at these channels. Twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy. YouTube.com slash the 40-year-old boy. And then the podcast is 
always here. It's available on Spotify. It's available with our Amazon podcast. I mean, look, if you're listening to me, you know where to find me. But I'm available at Amazon podcasts. I'm available at Spotify podcasts. I'm, uh, I'm all over the goddamn place. Uh, in Natural Born Killers, they said it's like the, the media is like the weather, except it's man-made weather. Well, I'm just I'm man-made weather. That's what I am. I'm a, I'm a storm front. I'm coming for you, baby. You can't stop me. Put up some sand, sort of some sandbags, and make sure there's not an alligator in your basement. I forgot I watched that movie. I've been watching a ton of movies during the quarantine, and I'm like, fuck. I forgot about Crawl. I think I mentioned Crawl on here, though. I don't know. Uh, I watch movies on Mondays with Pat. And this past week, uh, he's he, the way we've been doing it. <laughs> uh, he's like, you can pick one and I'll pick one. But then some nights he'll pick two. And I'm like, all right. Uh, like when I went and watched cartoons, I watched Batman and the Flash or whatever at his house. And I wanted to because I hadn't seen those, which is totally cool. I just like hanging out with Pat. You know, watching movies, are that's fun, too. And I like exposing him to movies he has not seen. A couple of weeks ago, I brought, you know, Real Genius. Uh, he had never seen it, so I picked that. And then this past week, on Monday, he showed me the 1981 Flash Gordon, or 83, with Sam Jones and Max von Sydow, and uh, and just just a pile of garbage. What a bad movie that was. It was it was colorful and bright, and it looked like well, you know, this might be fun. Like it is a genuine superhero movie, and they're going to try really hard to make it like a comic book. That's fun, um, but it was fucking lame. Like the guy who played Flash Gordon had no personality. But I will say this: I saw his crank. Uh, you're thinking what? Yes, during the show we were watching because I'm like I because I'm we'll do this. We we'll watching the movie and I'm like, did this fucking guy do anything ever again? Like, who is this idiot? So I looked up Sam Jones and it said Playboy Playboy Centerville or Playgirl Centerville Sam Jones. I'm like, whoa, whoa, hold on. So then we're sitting there and again, I don't tell Pat, I don't tell Pat this. Pat's in his chair. We're six feet away because we're social distancing. So I grab the phone and then I Google Sam Jones, uh, Flash Gordon, nude, naked Playgirl. And uh, literally it comes up and there he is and he's and he's fucking hanging it. He's out. He's out there swinging in the breeze. So I, of course, save it and I text it to Pat and uh, we're sitting there and Flash Gordon is ending and then we're watching the credits. And uh, I said, hey, I sent you a text. He's like, oh, yeah, I don't have my phone. And two weeks ago, he had written me a note. and He's like, hey, do me a favor. Don't send me a text. We were playing poker. He's like, don't send me any text. Reed is using my phone for a school project. So I send him this fucking naked dude Monday, except I, normally he's got the phone with him. So I send him the naked dude and I go, hey, I sent you a text. He's like, oh, yeah, I don't have my phone. And I go, please tell me Reed is not using it for a fucking project. He goes, no, it's in the house. I go, you got to get it. You need to get the phone before somebody else does. He's like, what? Why? And I go, just get your phone. Uh, and then he did, thankfully, and a, a crisis was averted. But then he looked and he's just like, oh, my God, how, where'd you find this? And I said, dude, the Internet is vast. <laughs> Whatever. You want to see naked Flash Gordon? It's out there, baby. You can fucking make it happen. Um, and seeing that photo was worth it, it, believe me the risk because Topol is in this movie this movie's so terrible dude it's just when they don't write a movie properly when you don't like there's no motivation at all for all of a sudden Flash Gordon's like on a plane and then there's an eclipse and then he, he goes into space with a guy who built his own rocket oh dude it's just a fucking garbage movie one of those things where you're like nope wouldn't happen nope now are there are there hot chicks in the movie yes of course but it doesn't matter because it's just so grim and the pace is so bad. Oh, it's just bad. It's just terrible. So we watched that. But then we finished up the double header with the, the double feature with the movie that I chose. Uh, I chose a movie called Digstown with Louis Gossett Jr. and James Woods. And what's funny is Pat hates James Woods because of what James Woods has become. And, uh, and I have to admit, I don't care very much for what James Woods has become either. But at the same time... Uh, James Woods has always been one of my favorite actors. I mean, he hasn't done anything recently that I've seen, but but John Carpenter's Vampires and Best Seller and Casino and Once Upon a Time in America. And uh, he's he's just the onion field. He's an amazing actor. He's he's you know what he is. He's very. uh, He's incredibly natural because you he he just he seems that this this will sound crazy. Uh, he's an effortless scumbag. Uh, even when he's a good guy, he just has that snarky cause in Digstown, he's a good guy, but he's a con man, but he's just, he's just effortlessly hateable. 
And it's that's why it's so funny that he's morphed into this guy on Twitter and what the fuck he's become because it's like, oh, he's decided to use his powers for evil because when he was using them for fucking good, you know, he was making movies and all this stuff. And, and he was just uh, he's he's just a terrific actor. He's really good. And he's also he's so smart because, again, if you know anything about him, his fucking, you know, his IQ is fucking eight billion. The only thing bigger than his IQ is his dick. So he just walks around with this entitlement. And uh, but it doesn't matter. He's really good at what he does. He's a fucking fantastic actor. So but, but Pat's just like, oh, this guy's an asshole. And I'm like, yes, but we got to watch the movie. And he was able to fucking separate the art from the artist. Uh, and it's James Woods and Oliver Platt and Louis Gossett Jr. and Bruce Dern. And if you haven't seen Digstown, fucking watch it because it's just worth it. I won't say anything else, but goddamn, I saw it was one of those movies where I saw it on the road and then I would go on the road. This is in 92. And whoever I was with, I go, all right, we got to see this movie digs down. Like for, for it was for a month long period. I took like four different sets of, of headliners to go see this fucking movie. It was so great. Uh, so you should watch digs down. It's really good. But anyway, so we, I, I went over there and I brought pizza. Uh, and I think I told you this uh, a couple of weeks ago, I ordered pizza from my Chicago pizza joint. Uh, I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to start a fight, but they just built it near my house and I've talked about it and I've talked about the issues I've had several times at this place. All right. I, <laughs> I've been to this place six times and I've had problems four times where they, it's just, I don't understand what they're doing. They just step on their dick all the time. So the last time I ordered pizza, they, uh, they burned the shit out of it. I, I, I don't know if I told you guys this. I talked about it on Twitch, but uh, and if you want, I'll put the I'll put a picture of the pizza up just to show you. But it was burned to a crisp. So I got home, and I and the thing was, uh, it was it was the opening week of the football season. So it was Thursday, and it was the Chiefs were playing on Thursday night football. I walked in the door. I turned it on. I had the kickoff just started. I didn't even open the pizza box, and then I opened the pizza box and I saw it was fucking burnt. And I wasn't going to go back because I was I bought it to watch football and stuff. And I'm not going to go back to the fucking place. But I was furious, and I and I. But I also at the same time, I'm like trying to understand. And I had problems there three other times, whatever the fuck. But I'm like, all right, you know, don't freak out. It's okay. Because I'm trying to be understanding, especially during the pandemic. You know, I'm trying to understand. Hey, man, people are under a lot of pressure. They're they're risking death to make me a fucking sandwich. I totally get this. So I try not to be mad. I don't get upset. And uh, but I, I I ate two pieces, figuring I could power through it. And it was just it tasted like a fucking charcoal briquette. So I had to call him. I go look. I, I'm I, I'm sorry, but this pizza is burnt, and uh, the guy's like, "Oh, well, my gosh, which one is it?" I gave him the name, and he's he's incredibly apologetic. And I said, "Look, the thing is, I'm at I'm at a football thing, so I can't come back. I can't bring the pizza." I said, "I'm happy to send you photos. I will prove it, but I'm really sorry that I even had to call. I've tr- I tried to power through it. It's just not." And he's like, "No, my God, no." He goes, "You know what? We'll go ahead and uh, we'll we'll credit you. That's no problem. We'll take care of it." And I'm and I'm, but I mean, at the same time, I'm also pissed because I'm like, I wanted pizza to watch while I fucking ate a game or, or watched a game, pizza to eat while I watched a game. Did I say pizza to watch while I ate a game? I watched that pizza. What the fuck? Who cares? Uh, but sure enough, man, I, 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 I apologized to him for, for calling and, and bringing it up. Like I felt cause I was, I didn't want to look like a stroke, but at the same time I recognize how difficult the job is, what they're doing, but also they make mistakes all the fucking time, man. So, but I, I, I swallowed any aggression I had. I was like, look, I'm sorry. He goes, no problem. And so here's what they did. Not only did they fucking credit my pizza, but then they gave me a gift card in the same amount for next time. So basically he gave me double credit for a pizza, which is great. But then he says this, he goes, Oh yeah. He goes, which one was it? I go, it was a, it's a large Supreme with sausage. He goes, Oh yeah. You know, he goes, I did see a couple of pizzas that looked iffy that went out the door and yours might've been one of those. And I look, man, I've worked in restaurants. I've worked in retail. You never tell people that you fucked them on purpose. Whether you did or you didn't, you don't, you'd never say, hey, yeah, no, I let subpar product go out the door. You never fucking do that. Now, good. They made me whole by giving me credit and then they gave me another one on top of it. That's totally fine. But, dude, you don't ever say to the customer, yeah, I saw a couple that looked like they might be iffy but, and, and they went out the door. But yours was, might have been one of those. Get fucked. You don't ever tell the customer that you let burn pizza go out the goddamn door because now I don't trust you at all. Like, I haven't trusted them anyway because they keep making fucking mistakes. And I know you're like, Mike, why do you keep going back to this fucking place? It's in a mile and a half from my house and it's a Chicago pizza place. 
And when they get it right, it's fucking great. They just started Thin Crust. Thin Crust Chicago Pizza is my favorite thing in the fucking world. So I, that's when I went, but they burned the fuck out of it, and I was furious. But then they even tell me that you, you let burned pizza go out the fucking door? What? Because then you're just hoping people don't complain. Then you don't, you, That's the thing is you're behind in the kitchen, and you just fucking put out subpar product because you don't want to do it over again because you're slammed, and it's going to fucking knock your dick in the dirt. I've worked in kitchens. I know what the fuck he did. And, and, and that's, I think that's also why they went overboard because he knew, he knew they fucked up by sending out my burnt pizza. He saw it. So that's why he gave me double credit. So at least they gave me double credit. So that's fine. So, uh, I, this week I said to Pat, I was like, Hey, am I bringing anything as well? You want to get one of those pizzas? I said, sure. I ordered pizza. I went to pick it up. I ordered two pizzas because his daughter doesn't like like all the mushrooms and all that kind of stuff. So I just got pepperoni and green pepper. Uh, and I checked before I left. I, and I used my gift card for one pizza and then I paid for the other. It was, and it's 65 bucks worth the pizza. I opened the fucking box and uh, the green peppers are burned on the pepperoni and green pepper. Now, when you make a pepperoni and green pepper pizza, you know what you do? You, you fucking throw the cheese on it, and then you put the green peppers on it, and then you put the pepperoni on it, and then you put it in the oven. It's raw green pepper. Well, what they do is they saute the green peppers on the stove, and then they dump them on the pizza, and then they put it in the oven. And it's like, no, you, you, you don't cook green peppers. They cook in the oven with the food. The whole, the whole point is the crispness of the vegetable, the brightness. It cooks in the oven. So I, I open the box and I look at it and I kind of, I just sigh and it's the same manager and, uh, and I'm like, all right, I, uh, I go, I have this card and then I have a loyalty card and we're doing all that. He's like, oh yeah. So I'm glad, you know, I'm glad we took care of you the last time, you know, I'm glad you came back. And I said, yeah, I came back. I, uh, all right, look, <laughs> I, I said, I have to do this. I said, this is burnt. He goes, what are you talking about? I go, look, look at these green peppers. They look like black olives. They're burnt. And he goes, oh, well, you know, we saute them on the stove. But I go, you don't do that. I go, dude, listen to me. I've worked in pizza places for 10 years. You fucking put raw green pepper. And I did swear. I, I, I've had enough. You make five mistakes in eight trips. I mean, I've had enough. And so I said, dude, you don't fucking saute the green peppers before you put them on the pizza. They, they cook in the oven. He goes, well, you don't understand. We're cooking them twice. You know, you saute them. And of course, you put them in the oven. They're going to get darker. I go, so don't do that. Don't saute them. You put them on the pizza. They cook in the oven. That's the point. He's like, well, yeah, but then they're raw. And I go, yes, but they heat up in the oven. That's the whole point. I go, you don't need to. And then I go, you know what? This is my fault for coming back. And he goes, what do you mean? And I go, well, no, you, you've done this. You've made mistakes. How many times? I just gave you a gift card from a pizza you burned. It's my fault because this if this is the way you do it, why am I coming back? He says, well, I don't think you understand. You know, it's in the pizza oven for 20 minutes and the pizza oven is very hot. And I'm like, dude, don't even think about explaining how hot a pizza oven is to me. I worked in a pizza place in Chicago for 10 years. 10 years. I know. I know how to make fucking pizza. I've worked in, in shitty places like Little Caesars, and I've worked in real places in Chicago that make real Chicago pizza. You don't saute the vegetables before you put them on the pizza. You fucking throw them in the oven raw. And I'm, I'm literally at that, at, I'm at that pitch. I'm swearing I'm that loud. But the funniest part of the whole thing, he has a mask on and I have a mask on. So we're having this conversation. Anybody outside wouldn't even know what we were doing. Cause I'm not gesticulating. I'm just fucking trying to talk, but I'm, I'm yelling and I got bass in my voice, not yelling, screaming, but just there's urgency in what I'm saying. And he literally, he's just like, well, I don't, I, you know what I'm, but I'm telling you it's very hot in the oven, you know, and that's what happens with the vegetables. I go, dude, yes, I recognize the oven's hot, but that's why you don't saute the vegetables beforehand. You put them in the, and he, he walks away from me. He just turns around and walks away. And I'm, I'm standing and I stop talking and he goes, he walks back toward the kitchen and he stops, and I go, so I guess we're done? And he never, he wasn't offering a discount this time. He was basically telling me, no, we serve burned green peppers. That's how we do it. And I, I, was, I was apoplectic. What the fuck are you talking about? And I look, I recognize this, okay? I've been there now, and I've told them about the problems three different times, and I know they think I'm a pain in the ass, okay? But I have photographic proof that I'm not lying, I'm not a pain in the ass, and they did this wrong. 
That's the thing. If, if I was just being some fucking jagoff, I would totally get it. But fuck you. I'm from fucking Chicago. I know what this fucking pizza is supposed to look like. I know what it's supposed to taste like. And you make, when it's good, you guys nail it. But you fucked it up. How many times? And then he walks away from me. He just walks away. No good night. No, I'm sorry. No. It was just literally, you don't understand how hot the pizza oven is. Yes, I do, motherfucker. You want to know how hot it is? I'll fucking lift you up over my head and shove you in the motherfucker. That's how hot it is. But I fucking sat there and he walked away from me. He never offered a refund. And I just, in my brain, I went, all right. I, I took the pizzas and I left. I put them in the trunk of my car. I drove to Pat's. And the whole time I was driving, I was, I look, I, re- I, I was not happy. I didn't like that I got mad. I don't want to get mad. I don't want to do that. They're working hard. They're all wearing masks. They're working in a hot fucking kitchen. I totally fucking get it. But you can't keep fucking up. You've been open 10 months. You've made five mistakes on eight different orders. What the fuck is wrong with you? I think I said this on here. I said, you know, me and Lenny should go in there and Lenny can take over back of the house. I'll take over front of the fucking house and we'll double what they make in a fucking three month period. People will be clamoring to come in there because we're from Chicago and we know what's supposed to be fucking done. But dudes, they just, you know, the owners, we talked to them a couple of times and they talk like, you know, the guy's like, did you know we have tavern cut pizza? And I go, yeah, I actually bought a thin. And he's like, yeah, that's how they do it in Chicago. It's like, oh my God, dude, I'm from Chicago. Quit trying to. They're trying to dine out on this cachet of, yes, this is how it's done in in Chicago. We do it just the same way. Shut up, dude. You don't fucking know. Button your shirt, salmon motherfucker. Literally a salmon button shirt with the sleeves rolled up. He hasn't made a thing in his fucking life because they're both screenwriters and shit, which is fine. But it's like you keep fucking stepping on your dick. And I'm even more mad because I'm like, this is a really good place. Geno's is a really good name. I said I wasn't going to say the name, and I just did. But still, it's a big name, and and you're going to fucking ruin it. People are going to think this is what you get. You get shitty food, and you don't. When that dude walked away from me, I was like, what the fuck? Really? We're done? And I said, so I guess we're done? I took the pizzas, and I left. And I got to Pat's house, and I go, look. I go, I'm going to show you something. I took a picture of it, and I sent it to Lenny. And I, I said it to my brother. I go, right, look, am I insane? Are these green peppers burned? And he's like, Brothers Pizza used to do that. They saute them before they put it on the thing. He goes, are you at Geno's? I go, yeah. He goes, fuck. I got to fucking Pat's house. I opened the box. I go, what does that look like to you? And he goes, oh, that looks gross. Because also, it's uh, it, there's the green pepper on like half the pizza. It's just a fucking mess. It's, it's just a mess. And I shouldn't care. That's the thing. I'm trying not to be the guy who cares about this kind of bullshit. Nobody fucking wants to hear a guy complaining about pizza. But especially in a pandemic and shit like that, these guys are working fucking hard. And I know, like I said, that they look at me now as some fucking bitchy customer who's going to complain about anything and doesn't understand what the fuck is going on. But no, burnt is burnt, motherfuckers. You can't come in here and burn crust or burn green peppers or burn fucking anything and expect people to just go, yeah, okay, mm, this is delicious. No, fuck you. People will stop coming. Even if you're making Chicago pizza, because look, there's a place down in fucking Echo Park that makes better deep dish pizza than you guys do because the guy used to work at fucking Malnati's. I know nobody cares. Why am I fucking ranting about this? Why am I even going out and telling you guys about it? Because for no reason, no reason, because you know what? It's the, it's the closest thing I have to a fucking story in my life right now because they burned the pizza and I lost my fucking temper. That's what it is. You know what? Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. The, the pandemic is ending because I'm starting to come back out of my shell. I, you know, the swallows return to Capistrano, the leaves come back on the fucking trees and fall to the goddamn ground, and I start yelling in a fucking joint because people fuck me over. See, that's what it is. I gotta start getting out of my house more, because I've just been in the apartment fucking locked in and not having any fucking bad things happen to me. I need to get out there, man. I need to get back out in the world and have all those bad fucking things happen to me the way they fucking happened to me in the past, and then I can fucking yell at people and bring the story to you. Don't you want to hear that? Don't you want me to go ahead and order more stuff and have more bad things happen? I can come and tell you about it. Hey, it's worth five Is anything I like more than me? It's people who like me. I love me, but if you love me, I love you. Cause you know why we both love me. How great am I? Let's talk about that for a while. And by a while, I mean forever.
Toledo Podcast. Podcast.